hunger. Hello to everyone, welcome, welcome to tonight's uh, CDI stream. I should, uh, I, before I sat down, I just gave the camera a big kick, so it might be off a bit. I uh, hope everyone's doing well uh, on this fine Sunday, uh, and yeah, everyone, welcome. Uh, it is summertime, isn't it? Uh, I don't tend to notice much, because I uh, sleep terribly anyway, so one hour more or less, should be less this time, uh, doesn't affect me much. Hey buddy, 
How is how's Griso today? Griso, uh, Griso's uh, very hungry today. Big surprise, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks, Griso. Um, I'm also terrible at trivia, so uh, we'll see how we uh, how we do. How we do. Um, Great Mystic Peerage, uh, yeah, of course, great to have you, uh, even if it's only for an hour. We should start out with uh, giving Kriso a treat. I don't know why the thing decided to put the bar on the screen already, but uh, whatever. Uh, he will have the treat fairly quickly, I suppose. Which Kriso uh, won't mind. Yeah, that's what you get, buddy. Be greedy. Um... So yeah, today we are going to take a look at some uh, recent pickups for me. Uh, games that I did not own because they are US exclusive for the CDI as far as I know. And these never made it to Europe. Um, and it's free games. Now CDI had more... Um, CDI does have more game shows, uh, and I'm pretty sure there's many more out there than I actually own, like every locale. I'm, I'm sure there's some German exclusives, some French exclusives as well, as well as some Dutch exclusives I, uh, I do have. Uh, and yeah, Mr. Mario, I do uh, enjoy some game shows now and then. Uh, Family Feud we had over here as well, which was fun. Um, and But unfortunately that is not translated to CDI. The CDI translations to um, are a bit limited unfortunately but uh, yeah last week we took a look at uh, some uh, game show conversions none of those will be returning uh, and those where we had much of an English vibe to it this uh, this time it will be much more US centered so that will probably be even worse for me but uh, we'll see uh, <laughs> And uh, yeah, this say uh, yeah, I do have lingo here as well. We might be able to take a look at that, but it's in Dutch, so I'm not sure how much fun it is. The main ones I do want to take a look at here are at least uh, first are uh, the Joker's Well, which is a game show I do not know anything about because that never never came to the Netherlands. I don't think. I'm not even sure if the UK got a version of that, uh, but as I understand it. Mostly, uh, you uh, you throw a slot machine, and based on the results, you get a question. Uh, so anyway, there's also, interestingly enough, a junior version of that. So for kids, so this I might have more luck with this one, I suppose. I'll get your hopes up. <laughs> and there was a uh, Jeopardy. Uh, very popular in the US, but also I don't think this ever came over to the Netherlands. Uh, as I understand it, this basically puts the quiz format up, up its upside down, where you're not answering questions, you basically have to answer with a question to the answers on the board. So it's kind of interesting, and I'm kind of curious um, how this will work on CDI, because, uh, you know, it can't type out a whole uh, question, I would imagine. Uh, and yeah, as I understand it, these are all dudes that actually did some game shows on uh, in, in the US. I have no familiarity with them, so I don't know. Uh, so let's uh, first take a look at The Joker's Wild, why don't we? And this one is hosted by... Uh, the back here. Uh, I don't recognize the dude, but where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Um... Wink, uh, Wink Mortendale, am I saying that correctly? I don't know this dude at all. Uh, and this is interesting for those collecting for CDI. If you see this game like this, uh, it technically means it's incomplete. Because the US, at least for the earlier games in the US, they always came... Uh, well, not always. There were uh, a couple of waves of CDI releases in the US. The first ones were those giant uh, CDI cases. Um, then we got the dual cases with these very cool slip covers and afterwards uh, they were just normal uh, dual cases here like this one. This is a very late release. Uh, Retro Chef, you are completely correct. 
And I am super sorry, but uh, for some reason I set it up in OBS, and it's the second time to happen. Uh, ha it happened to me where, uh, for some reason, it sets it to April instead of March. So I have to uh, change that again. Uh, so sorry for that confusion, but uh, great to have you uh, regardless, even if it's for a short moment. And um, yeah, I, I love your Reto uh, uh, swap shop uh, live streams as well. I I. I really wish there was something like that over here in the Netherlands, uh, where we could just, you know, have a community where we would trade games uh, with the retro community. Uh, but uh, as far as I know, there's nothing like that, apart from some Facebook groups. Um, yeah, Pack Panic. No, um, for the, uh, the European market, the the sleeves were not used very much. Um, Pack Panic is the one exception, I think. Uh, I do have Titanic in a slipcover, but I'll need to see if, if that's probably also a US uh, version. I'm mean, not entirely sure. So, uh, let's uh, take out the Joker as well. Does he, uh, anyone have uh, any familiarity with the Joker as well? Because I have none. Hey there, Ben. How are you today? How are you? Uh, so, yeah. But I, I haven't even tested this to see if they work. So, you know. <laughs> this is all new for me. Uh, I know what that's like. No, Titanic. Titanic is a documentary and it is a super interesting one. Um, because uh, the Titanic for CDI, I think there was also a PC release, but it is completely narrated by Patrick Stewart. It's really, really cool. Oh, Retro Chef. Uh, yeah, I might do that then, maybe, because I, I have a lot of doubles that I need to get rid of, and I would very much prefer it uh, to, to have that go to other actual... Uh, collectors uh, instead of actually selling it yeah Patrick Stewart he uh, as, as Patrick Stewart is narrating it's really cool uh, but it's not a game it's just just uh, a documentary but that's still very interesting and I think it had some exclusive bits of the survivors as well in there Thank you, Charlie O'Donnell, and welcome to the Joker's Wild. If you know the rules, select the number of players. For game rules, select help. Sounds great, Retroship. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just have to see how shipping does, because that tends to be very terrible nowadays, especially since the Brexit, unfortunately. Uh, the shipping is just a pain in the ass. Uh, I guess I should uh, start out with help, because I have no clue. Uh, how this game is played normally. I do like the little uh, uh, um, tagline there, uh, where knowledge is king and lady fortune is queen. <laughs> Bit corny, but uh, I guess it fits, since we're doing the slots. Anyway, let's uh, check out the help. Up to four people can play, answering multiple choice questions to earn dollars. You'll select from four possible answers to each question. Each game has five categories. The first round ends after one player reaches $500. The winner of the second round goes on to the Joker Challenge. Alright, uh, that's very basic info, but uh, I guess it, that's all it is. Just answer questions. Uh, I'm not sure how this, is, how this plays out, but maybe we can actually play with multiple people through the chat. But that depends on the delay, of course. Anyway, let's just go in for uh, one player run here and see what we have, how it, uh, how it works. Okay, go ahead and select a name. Uh, why is all this? Oh, is this one of those games where you have them actually use your name? Uh, am I in there? Select the letter again until. No, of to course he does names, not know Seth. Select the letter again until you see a name you want. Then not even Seth or something. That's unfortunately. 
Select the first letter of your name or select nickname and then select the name you want from the list. Because I'm pretty sure if you select there were some CDI games that did this where you select Eddie. Eddie. And then he keeps using that name throughout the Oh, I wasn't actually planning on being called Eddie, but the categories oh. for this game are grab bag, which is just super, uh, uh, you know, uh, impressive at the time. The nineties. No, at firsts. <laughs> Remember a single. At least if I suck now, then Eddie is just to a blame. A is one hundred. A natural triples worth three hundred dollars. The Joker is wild and can be used as any category. Eddie. Okay, Go so the more spin. of the more of the same symbol, the more points that symbol makes. Okay. <laughs> Ed, Ed, and Eddie. That was such an interesting cartoon. Uh, someone I recently saw someone made it in HD, and to me that that did not work at all. The squirrely lines and such that makes that cartoon so, spe so special in an animation uh, sense. Making it HD, it just does not work. Wow, look at the animation on Joker. that one. Television. Firsts. Highlight the category you want or off the... Uh, board. So well, then let's... Then hit an action button. Is the help different? Let's, uh, let's hear. When you highlight a category, the Joker machine displays the value of that category, automatically adding in Jokers if you have any. If you have any Jokers, you may play off the board with any category not on the wheels. One Joker is worth 50 and two Jokers $100. Highlight a category or off the board and hit an action button. Yeah, I, I tend to agree kind of, Misty. Like that, uh, those, those old, you know, just old birthday a video and such something just when feels off category, when that is the in a glorious 4k category, automatically adding in jokers if you have any if you have any jokers you may play off the board with any category not on the wheels one joker is worth 50 and two jokers 100 dollars highlight a category or off the board and hit an action button all right let's uh, let's go for television Here it is. For years, just as you were nodding off, Doc and the band blasted the Tonight Show theme song and you'd stay awake long enough for Johnny's monologue. What I want you to tell me is who composed that theme song entitled, Here's Johnny. I only know the quote, Here's Johnny. I have no clue Barry about the Manilow. rest. <laughs> Ed McMahon. I don't even know any of these dudes either. You have 10 seconds to answer. Yeah, just for the Sorry, your time is up. The uh, response is I was I was just watching if there was actually a time Paul limit Kenta. and there is unfortunately a time limit. No score yet. Let's keep playing. Oh wow, I still get 50 points for that. Eddie Go ahead and Yeah, I'm First. terrible with names, so you know. Firsts. Television. I guess we go for first. Uh that should be two hundred then, you're right. Here we go. Through the years, there's been controversy as to who was actually the first man to reach the top of Mount Everest, the world's tallest mountain. It was either Sir Edmund Hillary or his Sherpa guide, Hotting Carter, Tina Yathers, Siddhartha Gautama, Tenzing Norke. I don't know. Uh, Siddhartha sounds pretty cool. I'm sorry, that's wrong. Uh, we were looking for Tenzing Norke. You're correct, uh, Mystic. Awesome. Well, we have no I have money no on the board yet. Oh wait, that's not fifty. That's a dollar taken. Dollar sign zero. Eddie, go ahead and spin. I never even knew that was contested. Uh, 
the nineties. Nope. Grab bag. Numbers. Uh, uh let's go for the nineties. The nineties. That's it's kind of weird because considering when this game came out was in the 90s halfway. In 1992, this daytime soap opera marked its 40th year on television. Before that, it was on radio for 15 years. Oh. This show sold a lot of soap. <laughs> Which show was it? Santa Barbara. All My Children. The Guiding Light. As the World Turns. I only know As the World Turns as being a, uh, a soap, so let's just go with that. Sorry, that's not it. Nope. The correct answer is... The Guiding Light. The guiding I light. have never heard of that soap. I think no Santa... No yet. Let's keep playing. I have never heard of that one. Eddie? Uh, by the way, if the Go delay ahead. on YouTube turns out to be too long, uh, refreshing, refreshing the page can help a lot. Eddie? Joker. I've never heard of it. Uh, but, you know, I'm not numbers. into soaps anyway, so... Uh, let's try numbers. Like, maybe a simple maths question can uh, can help here. <laughs> here we so, go. Questions are pretty tough so far. New York City has distinctive business districts. For example, the area around 7th Avenue is known as the... The Banking District. The red light district, garment district, the flower district. What the heck does this have to do with numbers except for the, uh, I don't know, the banking district? You have ten no, that's not it. We wanted you to say garment district. Uh, okay, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Still no score. Let's I don't feel too again. sorry for not knowing that one. Eddie, go ahead and spin. Uh, I don't, I don't think there is a slot game Joker. like this. I'm... Joker. Oh, cool. cool. The nineties. Small headquarter. Oh, well, now it gives me two hundred points. So it's one. Oh, I don't already. <laughs> Here we go. With the 1990 announcement of severe defects in this multi-million dollar space telescope, NASA found itself the butt of many jokes. It also watched as its budget was slashed shortly thereafter. That fuzzy telescope was named the Palomar Eye in the Sky, the Stubble Scope, the Hubble Telescope, Let's go the for Rubble a Hubble. Telescope. Absolutely right. Yes, the only one that makes sense here. Uh, Edwin Hubble was a, a brilliant astronomer who first proved that there were other galaxies outside our milk. Finally, we got one. <laughs> I do love that they are the actually numbers. reading the questions out loud. But that does have a downside because you only have so much space on the disk. Eddie? Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you will very quickly run into repeat questions, which is an unfortunate thing with these CD-based uh, quiz games. Firsts. Joker! Uh, did we do first already? Let's, let's try first. Here it is. Back when The Tonight Show first began, Johnny Carson was still in short pants. Well, almost. The first host of The Tonight Show was Jack Parr, Dave Garraway, Soupy Sales, Steve Allen. I don't know. Uh, Dave Garraway? I'm going with Dave Garraway. No, that's not right. The right answer was Steve Allen. Jack well, Mark that would have been like my fourth guest. Full -time host. <laughs> uh, hey there, Let's Dave. The How numbers. are you today? <laughs> you have $200. Uh, 
Oh man, I have two hundred dollars. I well, Eddie. It's always. <laughs> go ahead and spin. Won't be any uh, any dinner for tonight. I don't think. Grab bag. Great. At least not a fancy one. Grab bag. Certainly not with today's inflation. Uh, let's do the grab bag then. Here's your question. Which one of the following Johns represents the typical Englishman and is sometimes symbolized on English products as a fat, jolly man? John Brown. John Barleycorn. John Bull. I have John no idea. Uh, you have 10 seconds to answer. John Brown? Uh, oh, nope, wait, that's just too late. It. The right answer was John uh, Bull. It was John. It was John Bull. Looking at the numbers, you have two hundred dollars. Holy crap! This is some uh, some pretty tough questions here. Eddie, go ahead and spin. <laughs> is Star Wars Legions cheaper than the Warhammer uh, Warhammer Eddie? starter set? You may spend now. Just I mean that that stuff that does rack up in price real quick. Television. Numbers. Joker. Uh, let's do numbers again. See if we actually get something related to numbers. Here it is. Seven is the square root of the number. Oh, holy crap! Uh, 49, 35. How did seven, that go again? That's 35 then, 14. right? How do you do square root? Is you have 10 seconds to answer. I think I don't remember. Oh, that's incorrect. No, it's seven. 49. We How did that go again? 49. Seven times seven, of course. And the proof is Man. seven times seven. Equals 49. Yeah, there you go. Checking the score. You have $200. I need more time. <laughs> Eddie, go ahead and spin. Okay, I, yeah, I feel I feel bad about not knowing that one. First one where... Uh... Numbers. <laughs> Joker... Numbers. Well, I guess we take numbers. Here we go. This is a theoretical question, I hope. <laughs> if you were to take all the blood vessels in the average human being and you placed them end to end, about how far would they stretch? Oh, wow. 7,000 miles. 7 miles. 70,000 miles. 700,000 miles. I'm just going for the biggest number. Well, that would be really nuts, though. But still. Oh, I'm sorry. That's wrong. We wanted you to say... Yeah, it's... 70,000 yeah, miles. bit nuts. <laughs> That's almost three times around the equator. The score now reads... You have $200. Still, 70,000 is also really, Eddie. really, really nuts. Numbers. Joker! Joker! <laughs> Numbers again! Listen carefully. The Japanese movie classic, The Seven Samurai, was the inspiration for the American classic The Dirty Dozen, The Magnificent Seven, Robin and the Seven Hoods, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. <laughs> the Magnificent Seven, I don't know that movie, but I... Absolutely right. The Dirty Dozen doesn't make sense, and the others... Let's take a look at the score. I don't even know if those are movies. Your score is Robin and the Seven Hoods, like, whoa. For sure, we are not doing that great Eddie? here. Go ahead and spin. T 
television. Joker. Yeah, I never. I I wasn't too Tonight. keen on uh, uh, westerns, so my western movie knowledge for one hundred dollars is pretty limited. In the sitcom Happy Days, what was the name of the diner where the gang would hang out? Never seen Happy Days. Al's, Angie's, Arthur's, Arnold's. I'm gonna say Al's or Angie's. Al's. That's it's Al's. not the right answer. Oh, it's not. Your answer should have been Arnold's. Arnold's. Who Red Dead Redemption? The, the first one I did TV go run. through in its entirety. Love that game. Checking the score. And that ending, man, that ending in Red Dead Redemption, that uh, that hits hard. Eddie, go ahead and spin. <laughs> man, these are super difficult questions. Joker. I think even back then it would have uh, been pretty Television. Um, kind of like bag. it. You know, if it's too easy, it's no fun either. Let's do the grab bag here. Uh, so especially when you're with a bunch of people, this... Uh, Listen this will here. make uh, make fun. In 1954, the L.A. Swanson and Sons Company introduced the first frozen dinner to American families. What was depicted on the box of this frozen dinner? Chicken. A TV set. A hot dog. An American flag. Lucille Ball. Uh, let's a TV set. American flag would also. You're right. You've reached five hundred dollars. That ends the Ooh, first round. Cool. Your score is yes? five hundred dollars. Okay, let's play the second round. Now round two is played a bit differently. On the wheels are dollar amounts and devils. You choose your own category to use exclusively throughout the round. Your goal is to accumulate money and avoid the devil at all cost. If you win the second round, you go on to the Joker challenge. I think we have a good chance at uh, winning. <laughs> Eddie? Which category do you Yeah, I, I kind of like the Red Dead Redemption um, uh, ending. Uh, well, not like, in, wow, that's a great ending, but I liked it that they just straight up did that. Like, they didn't give... They didn't give a hoots about your feelings, and uh, yeah, that uh, that one hit hard. Never played the second game. Uh, which category should we try out? Let's do a uh, grab bag. Yeah, it sounds so difficult for me. Like, it, it, people... I have high admiration for people just going like on uh, game shows. Yeah. I would be so stressed out not knowing anything anymore. Uh... Seventy-five. Two twenty-five. Two seventy-five. Oh, I thought I could uh, spin it again, but first we Here's your to... question. Gourmets consider the salted or pickled eggs of the sturgeon fish, or caviar, to be the finest food on the planet. Select the top-of-the-line caviar from this list. <laughs> Vagoda caviar. <laughs> Uh oh. Lumpfish caviar. Uh. Beluga caviar. Goda. That's not the right answer. Nope. Your oh, dollar to... amount is frozen, and your turn is over. You and now I get said... the turn. Beluga caviar. Yeah, cool. You got Beluga it. Comes you got it, guys. Awesome. I have no Black clue. Uh, I don't tend to eat much uh, caviar, believe it or not. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever had caviar to be fair. Uh, also, it doesn't it doesn't look too appetizing. There you go. Night. Uh, uh, oh well, I do not remember that quote at all. Lisa was having his uh, uh, catnip 
streets right now. Uh, although, you know, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, Felicia doesn't go nuts. Hmm. Didn't even mention the beer, but um, it's uh, it's it's like a cobra. Got some nice uh, Mario music here. This tune now always in my head. There was th once this this uh, meme tune made uh, on this, and now every time I hear this, I, it just stuck in my head. It's not Royce. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's go back and see if we can uh, embarrass ourselves some more. Um, oh, and because it was the last question, we just ended the game. Uh, so, yeah, should we go for a new round or should we try out a different game? Um, would also be nice if we could play it together, but I'm not sure how easy that is because of the delay and the time limit. That is an issue. Um, so I can look at that some other time where we can do that through uh, screen sharing um, with other contestants on Discord, so there is no delay. Um, but for now, that seems a bit uh, annoying. So uh, yeah, this uh, let's let's try out the Junior Edition. Maybe we have more luck. Uh, we can always turn back to this one later on, uh, but let's try out the Joker's Well Junior Edition. Uh, where are we? Yeah. This is hosted by... Yeah, we might have a chance here. This is by Mark Summers. Anyone know who Mark Summers is? But he's hosting this one. And it is cool that they uh, got those people just to, to voice in all of the questions by accident when Frieza touches the joypad. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Uh, I mean, surely. Big Bird, uh, you mean in the Netherlands? Was Mark Summers a serial killer? Uh, that doesn't sound great for a kid's uh, <laughs> rendition. <laughs> Um, Big Bird in the Netherlands is Pino. <laughs> Here's the game where knowledge is king and lady luck is queen. It's the Joker's Wild Junior. Uh, yes, Nickelodeon was a thing here. Um... Was Double Dare the, the show with the slime? Thank you, Charlie O'Donnell, and welcome to the Joker's Wild Junior. Well, that's his uh, you know the cash. Rules, select the number of players. His For game cash. Rules, select health. Uh, so yeah, this is just a reskin by the looks of it. Okay, go ahead and select a name. Let's see what kind of nicknames they have. Wow, this is an this ace, is babe. Press that letter again. <laughs> Him constantly naming someone babe in a uh, junior edition sounds a bit uh, or bad boy. <laughs> Biff, Binky, Bix, Blondie. Yeah, that's that's nice. Uh, don't you have more names? How do we... Blondie? No, I did not want to be called Blondie. Oh, no. Now we are Blondie. The categories for this game are... I'm sure there are other names. But Duh. Find it. Duh. That's a great category. Famous pairs. Get technical. Get technical. Books. The Brady Bunch. I know nothing of the Brady Bunch, so let's not have that turn up. Remember, a single category is worth fifty dollars. I'm a I'm more comfortable with stuff like the. <laughs> the Joker is wild and can be used as any category. Blondie, go ahead and spin. Blondie. 
I do I do really love it uh, that they keep naming you by your name Duh. that you select. Duh. Famous pairs. I'm like sorry, I I, I gotta go with the uh, like what kind jokers. of category then is it? Even? Action. For a hundred dollars. Which one is the name of a company which makes big yellow machines for moving earth or building highways? Is it Centipede, Cobra, Caterpillar, Electric Eel? And this one is already one I do not know. Uh, it's... You only have 10 seconds to answer. Caterpillar makes the most sense based on the Way wheels. The score yeah, three. awesome. You guys got it. Blondie? Uh, not one Your that I really knew. Uh, for me, this was a pretty much a guess that one made the most sense uh, in association of like the... The wheel things. Get technical. The Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. Ah, now the Brady Bunch has two, so I kind of need to go on there, right? I know nothing of the Brady Bunch. For a hundred dollars. From the Brady Bunch theme song, complete the following line. Till the one day when the lady met this fellow, and they knew it was much more than a hunch. Knew they would be the Brady Bunch. All got a groovy perm job. Should just have blown it off right there and then. Uh, I'm just gonna go for B. No, that's not oh. it. We were looking for. Right, the other one that rhymes. Was much more <laughs> than a hunch. Let's check the score. Blondie, your score is. Yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, Mr. Vario, you had it correct, but I was uh, too quick on the draw there. Blondie, <laughs> just ran straight into a wrong answer. Well, these jokers look pretty bad, actually. Now that I'm looking at them. Oh, look out. Blondie? Why would you put one series like pairs. as a whole category? Books. Oh yeah, that's gonna be popular with the kids. Joker. Uh, let's do famous pairs. Here we go. Every autumn, it's the same thing for these two. She holds a football for him and promises she won't pull it away this time. He runs up to kick it, she yanks it away, and he flips over. What famous pair does this over and over and over? Lucy and Charlie Brown, Laurel and Hardy, Mindy and Mork, Beanie and Cecil. Uh, I don't recognize. Is that from Charlie Brown? You only have 10 seconds to answer. You got it. I don't remember that at all. Lucy and Charlie are in cartoons and the oh. comic strip, Peanuts. I don't remember that Looking at all. At score, uh, Blondie, but it's have been a while since I've seen anything uh, related to the Peanuts as well. Blondie, um, go ahead and spin. Peanuts. <laughs> uh, I do also recently got a CDI based on them. Uh, you learn to learn. The Brady kind of Bunch. a competitor to that uh, Felix game at the Joker. time, I suppose. But uh, Felix never came out. You learn to learn. It did. Uh, get this. Let's get technical. Here's your question. When you shine light through this glass, it is split up into the colors of the rainbow. What is this triangular piece of glass called? It would be a prism, right? A spectacle. A prism. A gemstone. A bifocal. That's the answer. I think that's the first one I actually the genuinely knew. <laughs> a spectrum of colors. Holy crap. 
Let's check the score. Blondie, your total is $300. Still weird to me how they left Blondie and Babe into the name Blondie, selection screen for the kids edition. Go ahead and just, spin. Uh, <laughs> kind of lazy. Just, I imagine that it's just the, the same Brady names bunch. on the first game. The Brady oh, bunch. come on. Joker. Oh, come on. Here it is. Greg Brady frequently took his groovy girlfriends to the drive-in movie. What creatures went along one time unexpectedly? Peter's and Bobby's champion jumping frogs. Peter's ant collection. Cindy's little white mice. Mike's twin Bengal tigers. Uh, I don't know. Peter is in here twice, so let's uh, do the end collection. That's not the right answer. No. The right frog. answer was <laughs> Peter's and Bobby's champion jumping frogs. The slimy amphibians ended up on their cheesy pizza, and they tasted good too. <laughs> let's they actually the ate the frog, though. Blondie. I, I also really kind of admire that he does have some extra things to say about the answers now and then. That just adds some charm to it, I think. Blondie, go ahead and spin. The Brady Bunch. Books. Books. Oh, we are diving into some literature here. Here's your question. In this story on board an English ship, first mate Fletcher Christian led a revolt against Captain Bly. The ship's name is in the title, Mutiny on the Mayflower, uh, Bounty, Titanic, Pinafore. Mayflower would be my guess here. You only have 10 seconds. Bounty? Bounty. We'll, we'll do bounty. That's you guys answer. says... You Looking guys got this numbers. one. I do not know. Blondie, your score is... Mr. Sigfrierge, thank you so much for joining us. Have a uh, good evening. And yeah, maybe we'll still be at it. It's uh, it's Blondie, still early here. Spin. Hey there, Estonia. Uh, how are you today? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it seems kind of a Blondie, weird... Hit an action button to spin. Seems so weird that they Joker. just put the Brady Bunch as a get technical separate category. Get technical. Let's go uh, get technical again. Uh, no clue when the Brady Bunch actually. In 1976, came out. two men named Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak started a computer company in a garage. They gave their company a funny name. Was that name? Uh, was Lexatron. Bobsled. Was it actually Tupaloo, Apple? Apple. Or did they do something That's before? That's the answer. No, it was actually you Apple. The Sometimes you just start overthinking things. Round. You have $600. Wow, he's he's very very happy about okay, that. Okay, let's play the second round. Now round two is a little different. On the wheels are dollar amounts and dragons. You choose a category to keep for yourself throughout the round. Your goal is to add to your money without getting a dragon. If you win the second round, you go on to the Joker Challenge. Apple. So they removed Which the devil from this game. That's kind of censoring. Uh, or, or we have to go with the. We have to go with the as a category. It's my specialty. Yeah. Blondie. All right. Let's. I mean, especially for kids. Spin. Kids wants. Kids. Kids want dragons, right? Why would you remove the devil? <laughs> Two hundred. 
400. Oh, wow. 550. Wow, that's almost maximum score there. Your question is... A strange San Franciscan named Chris Riggio finished a 28-mile race in 4 hours, 34 minutes. No biggie, but he got himself in the record books because of the strange type of race it was. It was a piggyback race, potato sack race, egg and spoon race, three-legged race. I don't know. Uh... Like one of these makes the most sense, you I have guess. 10 seconds to answer. Let's go, Peter. Sorry, sack. that's not it. So oh. that freezes your score, and the round is over for you. The right one is. Egg What's and the one that race. I did not select? <laughs> Riggio used a fresh egg and a dessert spoon in the race. <laughs> Never. How would how would a uh, uh, a three-legged race even work? Like. Only for people with a cane. Too bad you didn't make it this time, but we look forward to seeing you. And again doing that egg and spoon Joker's challenge where you have to Wild balance Junior. the thing. That's so that was that was Here stressful. Are the Joker's Wild Junior, high scores. Alright, thanks for playing. I'm Mark Summers, and we'll see you the next time you play the Joker's so bored, Wild please, Junior. The bar will come up again. Uh should we if do we another one of these one? Select the number of players. For game rules, select help. Even the kids edition, even the, the, the kids edition we don't score high on. <laughs> I'm too dumb for the, even the kids shows. Alright, let's see if we can uh, improve our score of just 600. Okay, go um, ahead and select a name. Let's try and see if they have... To see more names, press that letter again. Oh, huh? Press that letter again. To see if no. That's so weird. Oh crap, now it's none. Now we now we're nobody. The categories for this <laughs> game are Up in the Air. Cool, that's new. Famous folks. That's new. World Tour. Also new. The Bible. Commercials. Wow, five new categories. That's cool. Remember, a single category is worth $50. A double is $100. A natural triple is worth $300. Okay, okay, we know, we player know. One. Oh, now it just defaults to player one. Hmm. Commercials. Up in the air. Yeah, the bibble will be uh, very difficult Famous for me as folks. well. And we just lost I like the category uh, our four off the board one expert Joker. in here. Hit an action button. Uh, well, most of these questions are super hard if you're not American. Uh, let's try commercial. Like, some commercials did get uh, localized over here as well, you know. Question. Uh, so might be when you ask someone for a Kleenex, it would be cool if they gave you any of the following products except for one Puffs Brillo Scotty's Nice and soft uh, Scotty's aren't those like uh, pampers like uh, diapers You should have chosen Brillo. Brillo? What's Brillo? You could blow your nose on any of those except a Brillo steel wool soap pad. Okay. Did not know that. Well, we have no money on the board. So what are Scotties? Player one. Joker. Famous folks. Up in the air. Uh, well, let's, let's do famous folks. Let's see how famous... Do we? For a hundred dollars. This movie star played a 13-year-old kid in the body of a grown-up man in the hit movie Big. The actor who played a big little kid was... Uh, what was that? 
Steve Martin, Tom Hanks, I think. Michael Keaton, Tom Hanks, Martin Short. I think that was Tom Hanks, right? That's right, for a hundred dollars. Yeah, awesome. Let's take a look at the score. Player one, your score is one hundred dollars. Big was uh, yeah, it was a kind of fun movie, I guess. Player one, go ahead and spin. Something that they really can't make now anymore, I suppose, since uh, you know. Um, the discussion on Up who you are, air. how you feel and such has been the diluted Bible. so much that uh, just making kind of Joker. fun of such a thing would be uh, deemed offensive very fast, unfortunately. Uh, up in the air? Let's do up in the air, because the Bible is, uh, sounds like just Here really we dangerous. <laughs> because cold air cannot hold as much water as warm air, when moist air rises and becomes cooler, the extra vapor beads into tiny drops of water or ice and forms a cloud, water slide, hailstorm, bolt of lightning. I suppose that would be a cloud then. You bet. Checking the score. Player okay. one. Let's go. <laughs> you have two hundred dollars. Finally, a, a question where I'm like, yeah, Player one, it's actually easy this time. Go ahead and spin. The Bible. The Bible. Oh. Up in the air. Well, let's uh, let's do this. Here's your question. In the book of Genesis, the people of this city tried to build a tower to reach all the way to heaven, but God stopped the workers by making them speak different languages. That tower-building city was... Finally, actually one that I know. Cairo, Baghdad, Babel, Jerusalem. Yeah, Babel indeed. You betcha. Now let's take a look at the score. Player one, your total is three hundred dollars. Player finally one. got an easy one again. Go. Let's see if our look holds World up. Tour. We didn't do that one yet. Commercials. Joker. Let's uh, let's do a world tour, which I guess is your geography. For a hundred dollars. Parts of Yellowstone National Park cover three different states. In which of these states is Yellowstone not located? Oh dear. Montana, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho. I don't know. I mean I'd be glad if I can roughly point out where it's kinda on the map, but I don't even know how these are. Oh wow! Oh, out of time. I thought I had the some more time. The answer should have been Utah. Utah. Yeah, world tour in the USA for indeed. Let's <laughs> take a look at the score. That. Uh, yeah, no one. clue. Your total is three hundred dollars. Player one, go ahead and spin. Oh yeah, I keep waiting for a cursor to appear. Uh, but World just tour. Push the button. Joker. Commercials. Uh, let's. Uh, I don't know. Let's let's try commercials again. Let's see if they're right now. Here's your question. A candy bar has the same name as a Peanuts character, who is Charlie Brown's girlfriend wannabe. This round candy bar is a York's. Peppermint patty, Tootsie Roll, Peanut Butter Cup, Baby Ruth. Uh, is that Baby Ruth? Again, not super familiar. You Where's only have patty? 10 seconds to answer. 
No. No. That's not it. Man. The answer should have been. I really need to catch up. Yeah, Patty. Peppermint Patty. Checking the score. Sorry, once more, uh, Mr. Mario. One. I was too quick Your again. Your total is three hundred dollars. But you were absolutely correct. Player one. Go. If Chet was uh, actually playing, they, uh, they, they, you guys would World tour. clean house here, uh, World especially tour. compared to me. On my own, uh, wouldn't make much progress. <laughs> I'm sad to here say, this is a lot of stuff. What's this? Uh, what is the name of this 600 foot tall landmark in crap. Seattle, Washington? What was it called? The Sears Tower, the right? The Sears Tower. Tower, the of, Tower power. of Power. The Space Needle. No, the that Eiffel is the Tower. Sears Tower. The Tower of Power. And I love that they put that no, in. No, that's not it. Wait, what? We were looking for. Space, space needle, needle, indeed. The Space Needle was built for the 1962 Seattle World's Fair. Where's the Sears Tower? Looking at the numbers. Where's the Sears Tower located? <laughs> Your total is three hundred dollars. Oh, uh, player one. Six hundred. Go ahead. I'm doing even worse now. Joker. Ah, uh, that's in Chicago. Joker. World tour. Well, I guess we're going on another world tour here. Here's your question. This famous city in Italy has canals instead of streets and gondola boats instead of taxi cabs. This wet and wacky place is... That's Venice, but uh, Naples, that was uh, Rome, very kind of... Venice, Paris. Not the best representative picture of Venice, I think. Way to go! <laughs> You've reached the five hundred dollar level. Yeah, we don't have the gondolas in in the in the kennels. We only have uh, bicycles have in the kennels over here in Amsterdam. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> okay, let's play the second round. Oh round fun! If I get this one different. wrong, we actually on have less than the first game. And dragons. <laughs> you choose a cat. Yeah, 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 we we know, we know. Uh, let's see one. which one should we do? Which uh, up in the air, we didn't do a lot round. of, so let's try that one. Player one. All right, let's not see that dragon spin. Fifty. One hundred. Three hundred. Your question is. Complete the opening to an old TV show. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's... Oh, finally, an easy one. Mighty Mouse. Smogman? <laughs> Smogman. <laughs> Superman. Like Astro Boy and Mighty Mouse, they make kind of sense. Absolutely right. But Smogman? Is that even a thing? Player one? Spin it one more time. Watch out for that dragon. So what's the hold button? Oh well, uh, not gonna bother with it. Because we need to reach 1500 points. 175. <laughs> <250. laughs> Mr. Mario, yeah. <laughs> Here's your question. It is. Uh, Smog in All China is pretty are bad. With long stretches of paved land which the planes use for landings and takeoffs. These stretches of road are called landing strip, strip, what? Airways, roadways, runways, runways planeways. Planeways, I, I like that one. <laughs> but that's runways, right? Yes. Player one, cross your fingers, spin again. No dragons. 150, 250, 325. Not that big of a number. 
Jeez. Here it is. The scattering and bending of sunlight as it passes through raindrops creates what? A black hole. <laughs> a cloud. A rainbow. Can you imagine a black Lightning. hole? <laughs> that would be terrible. Let's do a uh, rainbow here. That's the answer. For sure. Player one. Taking another risk with that dragon. Spinner. Hello there, Scott. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Hope your day is a fine day. 200. And thank you so much for the help here. Uh, I need it because uh, my knowledge. 450. Pretty terrible. <laughs> here it is. Apollo astronauts took this picture standing on the moon. What is the name of the planet in the background that looks like a big blue marble? Oh, that must be Mars. Neptune, <laughs> Venus, Mars, Earth. They actually name Mars as an option. Yes! Jupiter, yeah. <laughs> this is the Earth rising over the surface of the moon. The blue is water and the white is cloud cover. Player one. So if you want to go on the left, we'll go the on the now. left. Don't, don't if be you this hesitant. Or you can spin again and try to build up your Think high score it. total. But a dragon could wipe out your win. Oh, that's right. If we draw a dragon, we are out of points, aren't we? We are ahead now, so maybe we should do uh, the whole. Huh? Uh, or should we just go and see how far we can go? Let's just go. 75, uh, well, of course, it's the technique for if you are playing with multiple players. How far will you go then? Here it is. When some U.S. ship or stronghold is under attack or involved in some other emergency, what is done with the U.S. flag to signal distress? Ooh. It is dipped, lowered slightly, then raised. It is flown upside down. It is flown halfway up the pole. It is burned. Uh, that must be A. Oh, what a bummer. That's no. wrong. That means your score is frozen and the round is over for you. The right is it one upside is. down? It is upside down. It wow. It is flown upside uh, down. Okay, I did not know that. Too bad you didn't make it this time, but we look Ooh. forward to seeing you try it again on the Joker's Wild Junior. Uh, yeah, the but Joker's I did not Wild think Junior, that was the same in the U.S. Uh, although All maybe right, we actually playing. got it from I'm them. Summers, <laughs> and we'll see you the next time you play. Well, play Joker's one beat uh, Blondie. Junior. If you know the rules, select the number. So, uh, what now? Should we play this one again, or should we? Um, Try out some Jeopardy. What do you guys think? And also, what are your opinions? Like, how well... I, I have no experience with the Joker's Wild at all in the in show format as well. So, for those who do, Here's how well play. does this to kind of translate to uh, CDI to like this? Highlight. Use any of the four action buttons to activate selections. It doesn't matter which one you use. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, I have one more round and I have a Jeopardy, so uh, uh, yeah, Mr. Savario, uh, I think it was a study not too long ago that actually showed that uh, for the first time in like a century, our uh, average IQ is actually going down with uh, the new generation, which is uh, pretty concerning. Um, so... Anyone else want to chip in, like, another round or Jeopardy? Or another round of the first one. Maybe let's make Jeopardy. Uh, let's just start you can up have up to four players answering with, multiple uh, choice questions to earn dollars. And, uh, Each game has back. five cats. One of these. Hmm. 
Yeah, Idiocracy, the movie uh, kind of unfortunately uh, showing that it was maybe uh, kind of predicting the future. Oh, there's a recitation uh, card in here. Okay. It's even more complete than I thought. So, let's uh, get Jeopardy out. Another game I have no experience with on TV. I know it's very popular in the US, um, but I don't think it ever came out over here as a show. Are they? <laughs> Well, what, what, IQ is only one thing you can really measure, you know, what does it tell you? Not a whole lot. This um, is Jeopardy. And what kids have a very big advantage nowadays is that they just can look things up more easily. They don't have to think about everything. studio is the host of Jeopardy, Alex Rebecca. Thank you, Charlie O'Donnell. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Jeopardy. If you already know the rules, select the number of players. For game rules, select help. All right, let's uh, check out the help for this one. It's, uh, if you know the new. rules, please select the number of players. Oh, this must be by the same company, because this, this interface looks exactly the same. Here's how you play. Jeopardy, of course, is played with six categories. Each category has five clues. The higher the dollar value, the greater the degree of difficulty. You select a dollar amount within a category, and the clue will be read. You must respond before the time is up, as indicated on the timer bar. The first one to ring in may respond to the clue. It's kind of interesting the they use the remote, your uh, the commander, the it's the first is CDI controller, screen. and Here's how by the time it. this came out, no Select one had the that anymore. Of your response. And an alphabetical list of responses appears. You may scan that list up and down. Or select a second letter, and the list begins with those two letters. You can scan, or select a third letter. If you're on the wrong track, you may select delete to erase Yeah, I think the game just again. goes for a keyword you in a question instead of the whole the question. Up, that's, uh, yeah, it's one way to go about it, I guess. If you of know course, the rules, please select the number of we're players. streaming, so I can't cheat. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, go one player. Okay, go ahead and select a name. Oh, yeah, and it has the same thing as here. You can also do team name. Yeah, and it's only, uh, yeah, you need to select it in a list, so... Hmm. We are the big brains. <laughs> the bimbos. What? Blockheads. <laughs> or maybe, no, we are the, ba the brain drains. The brain drains. We are the brain drains. Brain drains. Oh, he actually names them. <laughs> now, if your names are right, select play game. If Let's not, play game. I hunger. Uh oh. As Again, you know, please the Jeopardy round will have one daily double. Here are the categories for you. U.S. cities. Oscar losers. I don't even know the winners. Animals, royalty, oh boy, quotes, and languages. Let's put the dollar values on the board. Okay. Uh, brain drains. Make your first selection. Royalty, how much? I know nothing about royalty, so my uh, if I go for royalties, I probably we should go for the first. 
Uh, hey there, uh, Ed. How are you? The clue is a daily double. Brain drains. You have no money, but in the Jeopardy round, as you know, you may still wager up to five hundred dollars. Uh, we need to make a bet. One hundred. Did some more uh, commentary for the the, the race. Here is your daily double clue. Oh, it was Peter a daily double. Peter the Great's niece, Anna Ivanova, was empress of this country from 1730 to 1740. Wait, what? Uh, so Russia comes to mind. Ooh, could also be uh, Austria. No, I think Russia. You're right. Yeah. But how do you normally phrase it in a question, though? Uh, brain still brains. a bit confused about that. What and that it kind of is takes away the, the the like the uniqueness of Jeopardy, I think. Uh, let's do uh, let's do animals. Animals, I kind of feel more comfortable with. Let's do three hundred. For three hundred dollars, sometimes found weighing over forty pounds, the American species of this is the heaviest crustacean. Sorry, time's up. Wait, what? You should have picked. What is a? Lobster? I was waiting for the answer screen. <laughs> Brain drains. Uh, <laughs> Which one? I was want? waiting for the Select. for the input screen to come up. I was, I was like, okay, the timer runs out, so you can read the question. Ah, damn it. Uh, language. Let, let's try language for 200. The answer there. It's German for it's au revoir. German for, uh... It's German for au, au revoir, which is, uh... Oh, crap. Auf Wiedersehen. There. Auf Wiedersehen. Not entirely sure. Yes, well done. Brain I don't think this translates too well to how to the actual game Select. is normally played on TV, but yeah, it's still kind of fun, I guess. Uh, let's let's do quotes. Let's do one for one hundred. You might have it. be there. The clue. Autumn to James Whitcomb Riley was when this is on the pumpkin. No clue. I have no clue. So you need to press the button to set like normally you have no, but it makes no sense because CDI can't have four uh, players. I don't know this one. Uh, this is um, nope. Don't know. Didn't want to try that one. We were looking for this. What is the frost? What is the frost? Brain drains. Uh, brain drains. Where U.S. cities? You guys know it's some some U.S. cities, right? So this one should be easy for you guys, not for me. I have no clue. <laughs> the answer there. A cast iron statue of Vulcan overlooks this city, Alabama's largest. I 
in New Amsterdam. Uh, yeah, that, I don't think that's uh, that's in Alabama. <laughs> uh, I don't know anything what's in Alabama actually. Is it? No, I don't know. I don't know. Birmingham. Bur I'm not sure if I'm in time. Birmingham. I'm sorry, Ah, uh, couldn't make you it. Should have come up with this. But you were but right. What is Birmingham? So that's actually how you should uh, phrase it, man. That Brain drains. even that. How that are you going to play it? Maybe Select. it's just because I'm not familiar with it, but in my brain, just that um, uh, that you have to make it into a question is already hard. Uh, so uh, done these yet? So might as well. For three hundred dollars, married to each other at the time, they were both nominated for the Goodbye Girl. I don't know this movie. I'm sorry, time's up. This would have been correct. Uh, Boy, yeah, Mr. Mario, could Marcia try uh, the refreshing, or Twitch seems to be able to keep up a bit more. Brain drains. It's uh. Which one do I don't you know why, but YouTube select. seems to lag behind eventually. Ed, you're still here, right? You're, you're English, so you should know stuff about the royalties. <laughs> uh, I mean, the English royalties should come up a lot. Your clue is... The father of the current king of Spain, or a legendary Spanish seducer immortalized in literature. Or there is the Spanish... I guess. I still don't get this. You need to actually hit the buzzer kind of thing. Done one? Hmm. I mean, I don't know. There's no one. Done. Oh, he doesn't. Oh, crap. No, I don't want. No. No. You should have picked this. <laughs> oh, you Who were right, on? Dave. But I clicked too far. I wanted to hit the space, but... Brain drains. Mm. How are you going to play it? Select. Uh, not well. Not well is how I'm gonna... Uh, let's do a tough language question. It's the one we had right. Here's your clue. The two main languages spoken by the opponents in the Hundred Years' War... Uh, that would be, I think, no. Uh, is that Dutch in Spain? Or was that the 80 year war? I don't know. Shows how much I know about uh, our own history here. But was that Dutch, French, uh, Dutch and Spanish? Apparently not. Yeah, that was the 80 year years, yeah. Uh, so what was it, 100 years? I don't remember. Sorry, time's up. This was the right question. What are English and French? Very good. Brain uh, yeah. What'll it be? Select. Man, I suck even worse. Was it Latin back then? Here it is. In a 1955 interview, John Mason Brown called it chewing gum for the eyes. Chewing gum for the eyes? I don't know this one. Oh, too bad. You didn't jump in quickly enough. Here's what you should have said. Yeah, you need to buzz in. What, what is television? Is television? Eh, the quote makes sense, I guess. Brain drains. How are you going to play it? Select. For $200. The name of this West Central Indiana city is French for Highland. Ooh, I don't know what's high in French. Uh... <sighs> I don't know. Mm. 
Ich lese. <laughs> Yawning. Atlanta. Let's try it. Atlanta. That's wrong. This should have been your question. What is Terre Haute? Terre Haute? I never even heard of that place. Brain drains. What'll it be? Select. Oh, Atlantis in Georgia. Okay. Uh. <laughs> I never heard of that place. Yeah, but uh, how would whatever it's probably French for high then. $100. Named for their loud cry, these monkeys are considered the noisiest land animals. I thought it was like the mountain lion. They can be very very loud. Um Name for the loud cry? Yeah, let's try baboon. Howler monkey. That might be it. Trump. <laughs> Sorry, time's up. It's not a baboon. We were looking for this. Howler monkey, probably. Yes. What are howling yes. monkeys? Howl or monkey. Howlers. <laughs> Mr. Mario, awesome. You had it. Brain drains. Which one do you want? Man, this is uh, this is difficult stuff. Let's let's stick to the one hundred. Maybe we can get something there. For one hundred dollars. If you're arachnophobic, beware the Brazilian wandering ones. They're the most venomous. So yeah, the spider is the answer. I, but how do you um how do you phrase it in a question? Correct. Yeah, I'm still very confused Brain about brains. making that into a question, uh, which is apparently not Select. required for this version. Oh, does it? For one hundred dollars, doctors don't fare well. In 1966, Doctor Zhivago lost. In 1968, this Rex Harrison doctor. Don't know. Oh, out of time. Here's the correct question. Yeah, these these questions are Dr. very. Doolittle? Ooh, Doctor Doolittle, I actually know. Well, we most do, but Brain not drains. not in that context. Which one do you want? So uh, let's try an easy uh, U.S. city here. The answer is. This grand Michigan city has been called Furniture City. Iowa. Uh, let's try. I wouldn't know. I wonder if this game would work with the CDI's keyboard. Am I not typing it right? Uh, yep. I'm... No, wrong. We were looking for... What is Grand Rapids? Grand Rapids, another place I've never heard of. Brain drains. How are you going to play? And that was an easy question. <laughs> Let's go for an easy English uh, language question. Well, maybe, maybe. Dialects of this language include Hakka, Min, and Xiang. Any? I don't know. Like Xiang. Sounds very Chinese.
correct. Yay, we actually f we actually found one. Brain drains. Which one do you want? Select. See if we can uh, keep the easy ones up. For two hundred dollars. In 1975, he lost the Best Picture Oscar as producer of The Conversation, but won for The Godfather Part Two. Uh, this is going to be one of those uh, yeah, questions based on The Godfather Two, but I no, this yeah, this is gonna be one of those ah uh, yeah. I think you might be right. Uh, do we need to? There we go. That's right. Awesome, guys. Another one that I would not have uh, gotten on myself. Brain drain. Yeah, as I say, it's one of those things How are you going to play where it? I'm like, ah, Select. yeah, that was it. But there was not saved in memory long the enough. Is... Measuring over 15 feet, the Salvadori Monitor is the longest one of these. No clue. Uh, no. Uh, snake? Snake? Yeah, uh... uh funny. Oh wait, doesn't wait what? Snake is not in here. What the heck? Out of time, sorry. Yeah, I was still you typing snake. This. Lizard. What is lizard? Oh okay. I was with uh, Mr. Vario. I also thought Brain snake uh, immediately as I was How thinking it, it and saying so it. It actually came through my uh, headset as well. I was like, ah, so it must be right. But nope. Kind of annoying that uh, by the time you type in the first letters and your answer doesn't come up. This king of Hawaii had many wives, but Ka'ahu Manu was his favorite. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, as you type and nothing comes up, you're right. You, you know that uh, something's up. That, uh, your answer was incorrect because it doesn't uh, auto fill it for you. Uh, I don't know this dude. Wait, what? How am I even going to spell that? <laughs> Kuina. Oh. Yeah, well, it's not it, but we're out of nope. time anyway. It should have been. Who was Kamehameha? Uh-huh. <laughs> if you say so, man. <laughs> Which one do you want? So Luckily, I I, uh, I never have to do this on television myself. I would be such an embarrassment. For $200. Bishop Fulton Sheen said, An atheist is a man who has no invisible means of this. Uh, I don't know. Who has visible means? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but God, I mean, we can try. Out of, out of time. This maybe, is the maybe, correct maybe. response. Support. What is support? Okay. Brain drains. How are you going to play it? Select. It makes so little sense. I'm not even uh, offended by it. <laughs> wow. The answer there. Tourist sites in this Wisconsin city include. 
the Schlitz Audubon Center, and the Pabst Theater. Good night. Like, I, I'm happy if I can point out where New York is on a, uh, New York City is on a map. Maybe Washington, maybe, maybe San Francisco on the other side somewhere. <laughs> or Wisconsin, I don't even know how to point that out as a state. Milwaukee? Uh, it's late now to uh, out of uh, time, fill it sorry. out, unfortunately. Sorry this about that. But you were absolutely correct once again, Mr. Vario. Awesome. You are on a roll, my uh, my friend. Brain drains. Which one do you want? Yeah, again, so we need to set this up sometimes uh, through Discord where it becomes uh, uh, possible for multiple people to play at once. That would be fun. For $300. King Tut's wife, Anka Seneman, was this queen's daughter. We don't know if she called her mummy. Oh. That's, uh, that's kind of funny. Um, Nefertiti? I don't know. Oh, it's actually in there. That's it. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> Brain drain. <laughs> Which one do you want? Select. Hello there, Erwin. How are you today? Welcome, welcome. Okay, Opatra might have been a more obvious guess. But <laughs> Here's your clue. After 1926, Turkish switched from this script to the Roman alphabet. Uh, Arabic would be my guess. That's it. Cool. So is in Jeopardy, is it always Brain the case brains. where you just play out the whole board Flipping. with uh, all contestants? Uh, which, of course, you know, now we are just solo. So kind of defeats the purpose. Clue. Since the 1920s, Boeing aircraft has been the mainstay of this city's economy. Boeing, where's Boeing from? Uh... What's a good guess here? Seattle? Yeah, this double jeopardy is the first slot that we hit. Uh, oh, it's already there. Uh, funnily enough, it was the first one I That's selected it. was double jeopardy, so we had the double jeopardy with zero. <laughs> Brain drains. What'll it be? Starter, you got it. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, we're, we're just solo play. It makes little sense to even... Taxi driver, network, all the president's men and bound for glory were KO'd by this film for 1976. I don't know. I really can't think of a movie... That, was that Godfather, maybe? No. But I don't know, so... Oh, that's not it. This would have been correct. Yeah, Rocky. Castario, Rocky awesome. Rocky. You had it. Star Wars was 1978, wasn't it? Uh, Select. In a video game obsession, how the are you is. today, fine sir? Welcome, the bird welcome. The to have the fewest feathers is the ruby-throated species of this. The ruby, oh, ruby-throated? Is that like a uh, chicken?
believed to have the fewest sparrow? I mean, I don't know, so might as well go with that. Uh, sparrow. Oh, this is a bit slow. It's not in here. It's not here in. Out of time, sorry. Turkey. You should have said. The hummingbird. hummingbird. I don't associate. I don't associate Rain anything ruby colored with a uh, hummingbird. Select. <laughs> oh man. Here it is. According to Alexander Pope, this springs eternal in the human breast. Springs eternal in the human breast. Oh crap. Sorry, Fine. time's up. Yeah, I forgot to been. press the freaking buzzer. What is hope? It's kind of annoying that if you are playing alone, then you still need to press the buzzer. Brain drains. Uh, I'm kind of curious how they do it if you play with four players. Sorry. Like, does CDI can only, at most, use two input devices. Uh, maybe different buttons? I don't know. Should look into that at some point. The answer is... Although, it's your turn, exclamation right? Exclamation marks and slashes represent the unusual sounds produced in this group of African languages. That's clicks. Clicks and the clacks and such. I think, right? Uh, is there with a C or a K? Not a click. Uh, oh wait, Cl click languages. Is that it? I guess. That's it. It's super interesting when you hear that. Brain it's brain. just something that we are not used at of at Select. all, and uh, it it it's it just something. Uh, yeah, I think you're right, Scott, that it's probably the same, but then again, it doesn't make sense that you have to actually click the buzzard, like, okay, I know the answer, I'm, I'm gonna fill it in. Why, why have that step in there? I'm a bit confused about that. For $500. At the 1949 awards, the time wasn't right for this Gregory Peck war film to win Best Picture. I don't know. I don't know. Gregory Peck's films. Uh... Yeah, I don't know this one. A bridge too far. Oh, I did delete instead of space. Sorry, Damn it. Time's up. <laughs> this was the right question. Uh, 12 o'clock high? high? Never heard of that movie. But then again, you know, that's from 1949. So. And it didn't win an Oscar. How are you going to play it? So oh, this is going to be good. For $500. In 1958, this crown prince's Buddhist fiance agreed to marry him in a traditional Shinto ceremony. Uh, I don't even know what what country we're looking at here. Shinto ceremony should be Japanese then, or it could... Oh yeah, we don't need to fill out the name of the, the guy, we just need... Out of time. Yeah, I this was thinking was about what, what the name. Ah, there we go, Who this is the name. Akihito? Akihito. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Here is the last clue. Again, I, I have no clue about our own royalties, let alone the ones from half an hour away Shorts from us. Observed, those who cannot remember this are condemned to repeat it.
Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not even sure what they're looking for. Who, who said that? I think they're looking for the uh, the person who made this quote, and I know because that's already in there, George. Okay, so you just Sorry. went Time's outside. Up. Of we wanted you to ask this. What was that? What is the past? What is the past? Oh, Costera, you were super close with history. And that's all for the Jeopardy round. In Double Jeopardy, you're expected to do well with these categories. Oh, now comes the double... World Geography. Jeopardy. I'm confused. Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. Oh, boy. American Literature. 1962. That's strangely specific. Chemistry. And finally, state flowers. State flowers. Here are the double jeopardy dollar values. Brain drains. Make your first selection. Uh, yeah, let's let's go for the big bucks. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Do we have play a whole board again? For It'll take a while. Dollars. The Sicilian name of this volcano is Mongebello. Uh, Mongebello, what uh, is that, Vinicius? I guess not. Vesuvius, that's the name. I'm sorry, time's up. You should have picked this. Mount Etna. That is Mount Etna. Ah. Scott, you had it. Brain oh, drain. Please, okay, please. Which one do you want? Where so do like. you want to go? <laughs> Carnegie Hall. Like... The answer? He wasn't Prime Minister of Poland yet when he made his U.S. recital debut at Carnegie Hall in 1891. Yeah, no, uh, I'm, I, I don't know. Out of time, sorry. Here's the right response. Who was Paderewski? Never heard of him. <laughs> Brain drains. Which one do you want? One thousand dollars. Like the hero of his novel, An American Tragedy, this author grew up in poverty. What author would that have been? Uh, an American Tragedy. Who made that? Who wrote that? Anyone have a clue? Does sound familiar? Yeah, most writers. Uh, Kind of start from nothing. <laughs> Mark Twain? Oh no! I'm sorry, time's up. Not enough we time. For this. Oh, Who was Theodore uh, Dreiser? I've never heard of Theodore Dreiser. Brain drains. <laughs> Which one do you Not want? too surprising, so I suppose. Okay, 1962. For $1,000. Only 20 years before I was born. On November so. 30th, 1962, he was unanimously elected Secretary General of the UN. Uh, no clue. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. 
Didn't want to try that one. This was the right question. Who was Uthant? Uthant? Man, that's an easy first name to write on your test uh, papers. Select. <laughs> Just one letter. For one thousand dollars. On the periodic table, one of the six elements classified as noble gases. Wait, what? On the periodic table, one of the six elements classified as a noble gas. Uh, is is uh, helium is not a noble gas, is it? Is it is it a noble gas? Right. Yeah. Cool. Brain cool, cool, drains. Cool. What'll it be? Select. Nice one, Theo. Theo. For one thousand dollars. Oklahoma State flower. This shrub with white berries was regarded as sacred by the druids. Uh, this job with white berries. I don't know any plant that has white berries. Oh, again, Frizo, for you now. Please stay here. Uh, no, I don't know. Didn't want to try that one. We were looking for... Mistletoe. What is the mm. mistletoe? Brain drains. The brain drains no, shall play. choose. Uh, let's. Uh, <laughs> For eight hundred dollars. The greatest depth of this sea, about fifteen hundred feet, lies near Sweden's Gotland Islands. Greatest depth of this sea. Uh, oh crap, I need Sorry. to first thing. Uh, don't tell Here's me it's the North Sea. Said. Oh, the Baltic Sea. Okay, no, no, I'm not sure. Brain drains. How are you going to play it? Select. Carnegie Hall, let's go and get another disappointing. <laughs> this Spaniard who revived interest in the classical guitar, made his Carnegie Hall debut in 1946. I don't know. Sorry, time's up. You should have picked... Who was Andres Segovia? Vaguely rings the bell. Brain drains. What'll it be? Select. Yeah, let's... If if I'm like uh, eh, oh the daily, daily double, double huh the daily double brain drains your score uh, is negative but in this double jeopardy round you may still wager up to one thousand dollars how did our score get negative well let's uh, let's remedy that huh <laughs> let's get to zero or double negative here is your daily double clue. Edward Albee dramatized her story, The Ballad of the Sad Café, in 1963. So maybe if I buzz in and I don't know the answer, then it actually uh, deducts the points? That's a possibility. Uh, let's just go with Agatha Christie, I guess. No, you should have picked this. Oh, of course. Who Carson McCullers. Who? <laughs> oh, man. Brain drains. What'll it be? Every time Select. I... 
put on the TV and there is some quiz on, you know, you go like, how can you not know that? <laughs> For $800. Uh, it would be hard to spend there yourself. The only two transatlantic passenger airlines in 1962, their merger never came off. Only two scheduled tourist flights? Nope, don't know. Out of time, sorry. We wanted you to ask this. What are Pan, Pan and M and TWA? Never heard of them. Brain drain. I guess I should not buzz in what that much. <laughs> For eight hundred dollars. Like Mercury, bromine has this unusual property. Uh, it's 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 liquid, I guess. And it turns your plastics brown. Which no. is no. It should have been. What is it? Oh what yeah, is, okay. It's liquid okay. at room temperature. I should have paid more attention to the answers. <laughs> Brain drains. Which one do you want? So not just liquid, it's liquid at room temperature. That's what we meant, game. Come on. <laughs> For eight hundred dollars. This common desert shrub is Nevada State Flower and gives it one of its nicknames. Uh, what's the nickname for Nevada? I don't know. Tumbleweed? Uh, there is no tumbleweed. Desert rose might be a good. Always, yeah, not fast enough. Man, the delay. Oh, too bad you didn't jump in quickly enough. The delay Here's is kind of annoying. Question. What is the sagebrush? Well, at Brain least, drains. at least it was nothing that we thought it might have been. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I need to, well, I don't actually have it, but the CDI does have a keyboard, and I'm kind of curious if the keyboard would work with this one. I need to look that up in the manual. For $600. Uh, because that would make it much easier, I'm sure. At 22 feet below sea level, Prinz Alexander Polder is the lowest point in this European country. Oh, I live there. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I live there. Like, literally. I literally live Correct. in uh, Prince Alexander Polder. <laughs> There's a plaque here. Um, Brain drains. Kind of celebrating the lowest it? point of the Netherlands. And funnily enough, like that, they made that little monument there, which cost tens of thousands of euros. And then they put that there uh, to symbolize the lowest point of the Netherlands. And then, like only like a year after that, they discovered like ah, the lowest point is actually near Gouda. <laughs> So, uh, that was a waste of money. Yeah, anyway, let's, uh... For $600. Move on to uh, less familiar Time places. Was on their side when this rock group rocked Carnegie Hall on June 20th, 1964. Uh, I don't know. Could, could try the Beatles, I guess. Oh, don't tell me you just want mm, not the. What oh, Rolling Stones? Yeah, that's also possible, of course. Oh, what the heck? Sorry, time's up. You should have picked. 
The Rolling Stones, Rolling yeah, Stones. Custody, you had it. Brain drains. Which one do you want? Select. For six hundred dollars. First name shared by title characters brand and from. Don't know. Sorry, time's up. This is the correct response. Ethan? What is Ethan? Sure. Brain drain. There's a lot I do not know. <laughs> Which one do you want? <laughs> the clue. The U.S. automaker that announced a 50,000 mile or five year guarantee. I don't know, but uh, maybe Ford? No, it's not Advocat. <laughs> uh, would be nice too, I suppose. But uh, this is uh, this is a safe beer. Uh, it's not Ford. Kevin. Oh, why are you being stuck, Dame? Out of time, sorry. Yeah, but you were, I couldn't do anything. Chrysler. What well, at least Chrysler? one we didn't guess again. Uh, so yeah, this is a uh, a beer called Cobra. Uh, Brain drain. It's a super nice. What will it be? Uh, I don't know. Do you call this no? Not embossing, but uh, there's a nice pattern on there. Um, but you know, you can't drink the bottle. But <laughs> still, something that looks nice. For six hundred dollars, and I need a new one on the soon. pH scale, a solution measuring one six indicates this: that it's very, very acidic. Uh, acid. You got it. Uh, speaking of acid, today I uh, I have a brain uh, I, I, I what will it for be? those who don't know I Come do on. brew my own um, kombucha, and I had neglected it for uh, about five months now. So the stuff I I pulled out today, it was I I, I took a, a little sip of it and it was basically just pure vinegar. <laughs> it was uh, it was pretty nasty. Also had to fight Muscovy because it did not want to leave the pot anymore. It had grown so big. The state flower of Kansas is often grown as a farm crop for the oil in its seeds. Uh, hemp. I'm gonna. Although hemp is not. Primarily used for the oil. I guess it's not hemp. No. Sunflower, that's a good... Uh, again, stuck. Oh, there we go. No, get to the... Sorry. Time's ah, up. not in time. You should have picked this. Sunflower. Yeah, you guys what had it. I was just flower. too slow. It's super hard to actually get the names input this way. Uh, I think also the CDI Name mouse names. would probably do it. Well, it maybe not. Select. Actually, because there's no cursor. Um, yeah, if the keyboard works, that would be awesome in this game, I think. $400. It's a rocky promontory at the tip of South Africa's Cape Peninsula. Hey there, gaming con uh, contrarian. How are you today? Welcome, welcome to the stream. And uh, you are right. Most things are pretty hard to input. Tafel? Tafel work? That does sound familiar. Blah. It doesn't find it. 
Maybe it needs the uh, article in front of it. But we're too late now. Out of time. It should have been. What is the Cape of Good Hope? Oh. Okay, he wasn't even asking for the stupid mouth. Brain drain. <laughs> Which one do you want? Select. For four hundred dollars. This blue-eyed singer first appeared at Carnegie Hall his way in a nineteen sixty one benefit for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. This blue-eyed singer. Frank Sinatra might as well guess it. I don't know. Uh let's go for first good old Frankie here. Oh my goodness. Correct. Like even if you know the answer, you lose half the time even putting the freaking Brain thing in. Brains. Nice one, Castardi. You got How it you once again. Uh, so game Castardian. Um, yeah, I got the Tovidos. Uh, I, I already had that game, or, well, game. <laughs> that kids thing in English, but not in Dutch yet. So, uh, it will be interesting to check that out at some point. Uh, American literature. Let's uh, let's go there. For four hundred dollars, this poet's collection, sequel to Drum Taps, contained "O oh Captain, My Captain." I don't know. I'm sorry. Time's up. Here's what you should have said. Nine thousand in the minus. Oh, cool, yeah, man, there's so many uh, German exclusives Brain as well for CDI, and I have none of them. I really select. hope to, to uh, get some of those as well. Like, every country has its own neat little uh, exclusive titles, and Germany has quite a lot of them. Brain drains. Your score is negative, but in this double jeopardy round, you may still wager up to $1,000. Uh, only 1000 I wanted to uh, come in even, but okay, oh well. Let's uh, let's go for the 10k in the in the minus then. <laughs> Probably gonna Here happen. Here is right? your daily double clue. The 21st Ecumenical Council was known as this because it was the second held in St. Peter's. The what? The what? Something to do with Peter, so let's just put in Peter and see what happens. No, I've not been uh, to the museum in Helmand. Uh, Peter Saint? I don't know. Let's just go for it. Yeah, they have. No, wrong. As I understand it, uh, they've got a collection what there the that was Vatican Council? Uh, obtained through Philips, uh, like where Philips had their library. Brain drain. Every How well, Philips produced Select. title at least um, ever. There was one of the each, and some one of the collectors got them, and now they are on the uh, in the museum there, which uh, might be one of the most complete collections out there. Uh, now, no one ever will have a complete collection of uh, of CDI, unfortunately, because well. Uh, that also includes product catalogs and internal uh, business presentation discs, for example. Uh, so no one's ever going to have a complete one. But for the quote-unquote official Rainbow. titles, that is probably the most complete collection out there. For $400. It's the form of alcohol found in beer, wine, and spirits. Hey there, Mystic Fewage. Great to have you again. Oh, uh, did I actually know this one? I did not hear the answer, uh, the question here. Uh, alcohol found in beer, wine, and spirits. Uh, this is a form of alcohol? What do you mean form? Ethanol? I don't know. 
That's it. Oh, cool. We actually got one. Brain drains. Not Which that it's going to get us Don't out of the minus. <laughs> it's on the show. And every, anyone actually uh, reach the, the minus? Of this fruit tree is Florida State Flower. It's the blossom of the fruit tree. Or a state flower. I don't know. Uh, what's a waxy blossom? Aloe vera? Uh, maybe. Aloe. Uh, how do I spell Didn't it? Want to try oh, that. crap. Yeah. It should have been. The orange what tree. What is the orange tree? Okay. Brain yeah, brains. you were. What would it be? To start on. Uh, once again. Uh, For $200, this Asian desert became widely known through the writings of Marco Polo in the 13th century. Oh, did it now? Did it now? I don't know any Asian deserts, I must admit. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I need to I need to check out the Marco Polo CDI, I suppose, and learn about his uh, exploits. <laughs> uh, which is uh, also a very interesting CDI uh, two-disc affair, actually. Uh, Stardo has it again, I think. Oh, uh, Mystic Fierge, you, you need to do Griso Snack we to, uh, to make the, the bar go up. Or Cat Feet the Cat. What is the feet, Gobi cat, cat Feet. I don't know. I have something. Uh, yeah, Stardo, you had it again. Man. Brain drains. You guys, uh, you guys are on point. Your clue is... Yehudi Menuhin was just 11 years old when he played this instrument at Carnegie Hall in 1927. Out of time, sorry. Oh crap, I forgot this to push the button. Correct. Violin. Okay, what yeah, it was violin? one of the things we could have guessed. No, unfortunately, Ethel, uh, CDI play? is never so going to come from the hands of Philips because they... Uh, they rid their hands of the whole thing. They uh, they sold up everything from CDI except for some patents, which Nintendo learned the hard way. For two hundred dollars, Thomas Nelson Page's novel *Red Rock* depicts the effects of this war on two old Southern families. Uh. I mean, uh, Civil War would be my guess here. Yeah. Well, let's see if, if we've got it right. Oh, does it need to add the article again? Oh, no, Civil War. Here it is. Well done. Cool. Brain drains. Oh, the easier we actually get work. <laughs> On June 12, 1962, three convicts escaped from this island prison by digging out with spoons. Oh, that's uh, crap. What's this called? Uh, 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 uh. Ah, man. Uh, Come on. Alcatraz, there you go. Jeez, could not come up with it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Man. Correct. I could not come up with the name Alcatraz. Brain drains. The answer is... 
This lowest theoretical temperature is minus 273.15 degrees Kelvin. centigrade. Kelvin. Or minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> this is the only subject I kind of know a bit about. It is Kelvin, right? Oh, uh... Why is Kelvin not showing up? Due to the V, right? Nope, it does not... What, what the heck? Out of time, sorry. You should have picked this. Absolute zero, yeah, okay, Absolute yeah, that's the, uh, yeah. I guess... I guess Here I guess that was uh, that was my bad. <laughs> Answer. This state flower of Massachusetts shares its name with a famous pilgrim ship. Uh, this is one for uh, the Mystic Fjord, I'm sure. <laughs> Mayflower. The start off with all the answers here. Well, Kelvin, Kelvin just starts at absolute zero. It doesn't measure uh, absolute zero. It just correct. Zero Kelvin is absolute zero. And that does it for double jeopardy. There is no jeopardy champion for this game. We will not be playing final jeopardy this time. Oh, thanks that for rubbing it in, man. Here are jeopardy's high scores. I'm sorry you didn't make it into the high score this time. Better luck next time. <laughs> like There's no screen again? for the low scores. Uh, play again? No. I do like the game. Uh, yeah, again, I need to set this up sometime that we can actually have a few people playing this um, with without uh, some delay through Discord. I think that would work. No? Okay. But thanks for playing. I'm Alex Trebek, and I'll see you next time when, once again, you get to play Jeopardy. But with some... Um... Oh, man. <laughs> Gustardo, thank you so, so, so much for the, <laughs> for the sticker. That is awesome. Thank you. I think you are uh, doing... Do a... I think you are doing a uh, premiere here on the on the on the channel here. Awesome man, thank you so much. Uh, but yeah, I think this uh, this game is really fun, especially when you are with uh, multiple people. And uh, yeah, we definitely need to check that out sometimes. I think through Discord and some screen sharing shenanigans, uh, we can make that happen. Now, there is um, one more game we can check out that is a uh, that I have. I mean, there are plenty, plenty of uh, other game shows, especially, I think, from Germany. There's a few as well, uh, and Dutch ones. Let's uh, head over to the screen here. Uh, just to give you a quick impression here. What's this music? Where did we drop into now? Uh, but there was one game in English that I already owned, so we can check that one out as well. Uh, but, just to give you an idea of other games that are like this, but they are in Dutch, there is this one, Lingo, with uh, François Boulanger. Uh, this is an excellent game, actually, for, uh, you know, for what it's worth. Uh, Lingo is originally an American concept, and... The Dutch one uh, became very, very popular. The guy who actually brought it over got very rich of it. And uh, um, the elderly went up in arms when they threatened to cancel it. <laughs> uh, and it is basically Wordle. Wordle is lingo. Um, yes, my 470 here, it works. 
uh, it also has a battery mark. Uh, but it is less reliable when it comes to reading discs. It's susceptible to read errors more so than this one. Uh, also, the 450 has a RGB mod, so it actually uh, it actually outputs nicer visuals than the 470 right now. Yeah, I think Lingos is still on TV. Um, but yeah, remember that when they wanted to cancel it, and uh, there was there were <laughs> there were quite a lot of people not happy with that. Uh, there is also a spelling website, which is a spelling contact, uh, contest thing, which was televised at some point here in the Netherlands. Uh, and they made a CDI based on that as well, uh, which I'm terrible at because spelling sucks. Dutch spelling is even worse. Even worse. And here's one I've never seen. It's Sport Freaks. It's, uh, it's a Dutch quiz show, or was. This does not exist anymore. Uh, the spelling one doesn't exist anymore either. Uh, and this is uh, this is just questions, sports related. Uh, but yeah, it's in Dutch, so not real useful to check it out right now. But uh, a game that I do have here is uh, Name That Tune, and it's uh, it's not the best game out there, and we will s discover why. However, before we do that, I uh, want to refresh my beer, go for a bit of a, uh, for the restroom. So, uh, until but that, I am going to get you to the Be Right Back screen, and I will be back in about two minutes. So, until just a moment. And we're back, sorry about that. Um, let's actually see if we can give Rizzo his uh, snack time. Um. <laughs> uh, just catching up on chat here. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, I find it a bit difficult to make... Um, go with the Dutch ones because you know it's <laughs> half the at least half the stream won't be able to understand anything of it 
Um, but yeah, if you make... Where's my mouse? Here's my mouse. Uh, to make the bar go up in the stream, uh, if you type in exclamation mark and then Griezo. Griezo snack. Uh, it will actually go up. And once it's filled, he will get his snackies. And this works on both YouTube as well as uh, uh, Twitch. So I need two more people to uh, give him a little snacky. Uh, there is one more game I know of on uh, CDI that is also based on the television show. And that is Do You Remember the 60s? But I do not own that one. Uh, and otherwise I don't... But I can't think of any others. Maybe there are. But uh, we are going to check out Name That Tune. Now what's interesting about Name That Tune is Name That Tune had different iterations in the US. I never came over here I don't think. Um, and there was one planned for the 90s, and that one is what this one is based on. However, the actual show never came out. So, yes, this is based on a show, but also at the same time on a show that was never actually made. Uh, so that's it's kind of kind of fun. Um, and the person who is doing this... <laughs> There we go. <laughs> so yeah, the game show kind of existed, but then it also kind of didn't exist. And the person who was supposed to host the show is also uh, the one who is hosting this one, which might also be uh, someone that people will recognize from the US. Because um, I think he did more shows. I think his last name is Goon. I forgot his first name. Let's try and see if I can find it. And yeah, Lisa does make that noise. <laughs> uh, well, I think he introduces his name as he is uh, coming up, so we will hear it. Yeah, finally, the bar finally works. And if anyone has any fun ideas for other uh, redeems, uh, do let me know, because uh, now this one finally works. Uh, and I can look and uh, see if I can make some other ones. Oh, what's, uh, what's broken in the bot message? That's the thing, you know, I've got that um, disabled, so I don't ever see that one. Uh, oh, I see. It's uh... yeah. Thanks for pointing that out, Costardo. It's actually referencing some arguments and not actually showing the arguments. That's unfortunate. Uh, we'll need to look into that. Yeah, look. <laughs> one for drinking beer. Oh, it's that's maybe yeah. That tune, and be here's cool. a man who needs no introduction, so we won't give him one. Hi, I'm Bob Goen, and I'm your host as we get set to play Name Yeah, thanks that for pointing out. Uh, I'll need to Let's check it out. See now, if, if I you can already make know work. the rules, just press an action button and we'll be on our way. Here's how we play Name That Tune. There are four rounds in the game. Everyone plays in the first two rounds, but at the end of the second round, the two players with the highest scores will go on to the note for note tune competition. Now the winner of that round gets to play the bonus game for big points. Yes. Uh, Nen is that the, uh, uh, I guess somewhere the argument gets not called, but Nen the object of round does one mean to not, uh, by correct not a number. Now, at the top of the board, you'll notice the player colors. Uh, so something is going wrong with the arguments there. Turn. Hmm. The question mark up in the upper left-hand corner of the screen... So, Name the Tune is basically just... You hear a very small fragment of a song, and you've got to you name what it is. And, and the one thing that I think this game completely gets wrong is that you have... CD. And the one thing CD really excels at is in, like, um, audio fidelity. So, it's a true shame that they opted to use these 
really stupid, poorly made um, renditions like the MIDI tunes here. When you're ready to begin and playing, that's annoying. The musical note within a category you like. If this is the okay, say up you with the C of you do do get category. that number? Man. Each note in round one will have what a random point value ranging from fifty there? to two hundred and twenty-five. Now after being told the point value for the note hmm. that you selected, it's you're going curious. to play the tune that we want you to name. Later in the round, if you've forgotten what the category is about, just click on the category box before choosing a note and you'll hear the description again. When you know the name of the tune, press any action button to stop the music. After saying the name of the tune, click on the answer box to hear the answer. So this is another game that plays by the, uh, the right box and by the by the honor system. Score. But if you missed your tune, Click on the wrong box. So you just have to say yes, Sometimes I was right. Or, nope, and I was incorrect. Contains a bonus. If you guess your tune, you'll get a chance to earn more points by answering the bonus question correctly. Which After is a clever way the for these question, older games to, answer, you know, put in right more right uh, questions and answers because and at the end of this you don't round, have to program anything in for a specific um, where you'll have uh, response and all the characters can. that would come with that. As you can see. Round two looks just like round one. Play begins the same way, by selecting the musical note in the category of your choice. But now, each note represents a random point value ranging between 325 and 500 points. Now, in this round, the player with the lowest score goes first. This is the speed round, so you'll want to name those tunes as fast oh, as you can. Oh, so the, the AP kind of messed up after the Hrizo snack. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. On your uh, I'll need to Be check out the logs. Because there are bonus notes in this round too, and a chance to earn more points on that question. When this round is over, the two Man, I forgot how long this... Move on to play our Let's notes. just uh, move on here, because... Uh, <laughs> um... This is also one of the very few CDI games that actually has a, a actual loading screen. Really weird. Um, you can play up to four players. Uh, we could actually do that. Well, let's just go for one player and, you know, be, uh, Red. be in co-op mode here. Uh, but this one, because there is no time limit mostly... Uh, it doesn't really matter too much. Just remember, if you need any help at any time, click the question mark in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Good luck, everybody. Yeah, and uh, good luck indeed, because of the, you know, kind of weird sampling they use. Many of the tunes, and also the tune, the duration of the tunes is really the short. Four categories are... Um, so I find this super Midnight difficult. Meeting. This is also Lost very much one word um, H marks the aimed spot. towards the American market. So you get a lot of of, of music Red that player, I've never even Europe. heard of because it's very local. Uh, does he actually explain the categories? And these categories are really weird as well. to pick a note first to hear a category description. Ah, okay, so we first need to pick a note. Okay, let's do uh, midnight, uh, midnight feeding. And the point values are just random, so it doesn't really matter which one you pick here. Your category is midnight feeding. These are tunes with the word baby in the title. For 100 points, go ahead, name that tune. Already don't know too many songs with Baby in the title. Any on have any idea? Uh, again, it's just the instrumentation is kind of lacking. <laughs> yeah. Or music, yeah. <laughs> Would fit right in, yeah. <laughs> uh.
I didn't recognize it. Let's see what it is. And the weird thing is, now it's going to play it again in the background, and then it will have uh, a bit more fidelity or a bit more instrumentation. And I agree, it does sound like bad MIDI, and that is, I just don't get it for a CDI game. You have CD, you have audio quality. Um, why not use it? Why go for these four samples? A hit for both the Miracles and Linda Ronstadt. Ooh, baby, baby. Could have guessed that, maybe. But yeah, here, now there's more percussion introduced to it. Why not have that? that tune? In the actual uh, song, you need to guess why only that that very poor rendition of it. Now we got it wrong. Don't let that get you down, Red Player. Well, that is actually. Mm, we need to. That is uh, maybe a possibility, Castardo, but. Uh, we'll, ne we'll need to check out the credits, but I'm pretty sure like the credit sequence is enormous for all the credits they are giving. You've picked Lost and Found. Maybe you'll find all your favorite tunes in this category. For 200 That's points, the category. Maybe it's your favorite tune. <laughs> name that tune. No. <laughs> Anyone has any guess? There's something that kind of familiar, but pff, I don't know. I can't place it at all. It does sound like a uh, 80s TV show, like one of those, uh, like like talk show thingies, introductions. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what this is actually supposed to be. Let's, uh, let's have a listen. The only hit for actor David Naughton, making it. Who? What? Make it? Did you get it right? Uh, no. Hey, there's always hope, Red Player. And this is. Let's check those scores and see how well you did. Yes, I'm in the lead. This is so difficult, this stuff. And maybe that was also on purpose, you know, uh, using different samples. You really have to listen carefully to them. We're on to round two, and it's time for speed play. Don't take too much time naming those tunes because the point values will be dropping with every passing second. Now remember, when this round is over, the two players with the highest scores will move on to play our note-for-note -note tune competition. Good luck. <laughs> Alright, so now we uh, add speed to the equation. The next awesome. next categories are... Let's Watch TV. Texas Two-Step. Melting Pot, 80s Ladies. Red Player, you're up first. Yeah, uh, there is only one play. We should have maybe added more players so we had uh, the ability to play a bit longer here, the different categories. You've selected Let's Watch TV. These are TV themes, or tunes recorded by TV stars. Okay, we know TV. And 75 points. Go ahead and name that tune. I don't know, man, but that's... That, don't want to dance on that. 
I have no clue. What is it? Billy Vera and the Beaters at this moment. I, I, I still don't know what that's from. Well, doggone it. <laughs> yeah, number Sesame Street is more, more on my level. Jeez, uh, let's let's go for the ladies. 80s You've ladies. Chosen 80s ladies. These are tunes by ladies of the 80s. No kidding. No kidding. <gasps> bonus, guys. Bonus. For 325 points. Okay, let's see if you can name that tune. Probably not. I know this one. At least I recognize it. But. Can I name it? Woman I Love. Barbara Streisand's Woman in Love. Yeah, you added the uh, Castardo. Yes? Yes, yes. Castardo had it, not me. Castardo had it. Cool. Good answer. Now you're on to the bonus question. For oh. 325 Wait, more points, here's your bonus question. To what actor was Barbara Streisand once married? I do not know. Anyone have a clue? Let's uh, hear what uh, Jack Nicholson item. The answer is Elliot Gould. Who? So, did you get your bonus question right? Uh, no. Sorry, you missed your chance at those bonus points. Oh, well. We're still in the lead, so it's no problem. Oh, now we get to the win. <laughs> You won't, you won't believe this, uh, this final round. We're going on to the note for note round. And since you're the only one playing, I'll give you two chances to earn additional points. Oh, cool. He actually changes uh, for one player. Kind of weird because in the previous section, he just said like uh, the, the last two players. Less is more is what we're striving for here in this round. The fewer notes you need, the higher your points will be. Yeah, and this this is this is super difficult because now you have to choose how many notes do you want to hear. And if you choose one, player, you literally player. hear only one note. So it no one could ever answer that. Let's go for seven, which is already impossible, as you will hear. Uh, but yeah, with each less, you will get more points. But... Uh, you know, how, how can you know what song is being played if you only hear one C? Four? Four? Are you, are you sure? Okay, let's try it. Name that tune in four notes. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> like, how are you supposed to guess this? So, what is it? From 1973, that's Touch Me in the Morning. Of course. Of course. No, we did not, um, almost had it. <laughs> yeah, but it, let, yeah, yeah. I, I'll show you what one note gets you. It's, uh, it's pretty hilarious. Here is your one note. Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Did you, did you recognize it? <laughs> Come on, guys. This is an easy one. <laughs> like, <laughs> who came up with this? Like, <laughs> it's it's impossible. Um. Yeah. So what? What was this? You just heard the look of love. Ah, the look of love, of course. I think there's a bonus behind this bonus. <laughs> well, we've reached the end of round three, and as you know, only one player can go on to the bonus round. Red player, you're on top. Yeah, this this was the concept for the planned nineties edition. Here it is. Your so, final uh, challenge, the bonus round. Now, this is your chance to kind of get why they cancelled it. In the victory circle. Uh, and yeah, the last one I can't. I, I'm very bad at uh, as well because that's actually a visual one. And I'm bad with faces as it is. Look carefully before you select a picture because if you pick the wrong one, you're out. Like, I don't recognize anyone from this. Press the start button to begin. Uh, so I think what's happening is they, they will play music and you have to select who it's uh, from. But again, I, I don't even... I don't know who these people are. I, I just can't recognize faces. This is Eric Clapton? Okay, actually select him now and here who he is. No, you can't. Also, these, these, these pictures are just very blurry in general. They're not very high quality. Um... But yeah, I, I just can't, I can't recognize faces normally, so let alone from these uh, blurry pictures. And then you have this stuff. Like, who made this? Who made this? I don't know. Uh, I guess wrong. So sorry, but that was... Lightning Strikes by Lou Christie. Huh. Now it's time to look at your grand total. Let's let's not call it grand, please. <laughs> Wait, where's my whole 190 points? <laughs> Something deduct points. Oh man, yeah, this this game is tough. It's super difficult, I find. Oh yeah, let's input my name. No, I can't input my name. I can't, I can't actually input my name. Uh, do you want to play again? Do we want to play again? I don't know, it's, uh, it's not the best game out there. <laughs> Alright, I won't try. Nope. Red. Let's see if we can... Uh... Green. Alright, Castardo, thank you so much for uh, for being here tonight and for the donation and, of course, for all of your uh, correct answers. You were on a roll, man. Hope you have a good night. Take care. Yellow. Uh, let's... Just remember... Yeah, take if care. If you need any help at any time... Click the question mark in the upper left hand corner. Yeah, let's uh, let's do more players and see if we can actually find some more. Uh, you know, get get more of the, the game. Categories are fabulous fifties, up up and away, group therapy, down under. Because we only heard two of the categories in each round, so now we can actually play some more. You're up first. 
And maybe, maybe we will find one tune we actually recognize. Your category is Fabulous 50s. These are tunes released in the 1950s. Well, that's a sensible uh, category. And 25 points. Go ahead and name that tune. It does sound familiar, but I don't know the name. Like that old, uh, old rock, uh, rock and roll tune. Hound Dog, maybe. Connie Francis points a finger at Stupid Cupid. Uh, well, well, I didn't hear the answer. Are you able to name that tune? Uh, what was the answer? <laughs> the cat was uh, going through it. So did, did we get it, Hound Dog? No. <laughs> now don't let that get you down, Red Player. Green Player, your turn to pick a note. Yes, I should. Your category is Up, Up and Away. The tunes in this category were all popular in 1961 when Alan Shepard became the first American in space. For 200 points, go ahead and name that tune. We shall. There was just the intro, and it started out different than I expected after the intro. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. An oldie but a goodie. Pretty little angel eyes. Okay. Did you get it right? Uh, no, I did not. There's always hope, Green. The points value, actually. Moving right along to you, Yellow Player. Oh, Scott, you had it. That was too fast once again. Damn it. <laughs> You've chosen group therapy. These are tunes recorded by a group. For fifty points. Oh, it's only. Name that it's tune. only 50 points. We're bound to have this one. Once again, I don't know. Uh, elevator music was what I was thinking, but then... Uh, <laughs> then it shifted. This is so difficult. The Motown classic, My Girl. No, I did not. Nope. Don't know it. Did you get the right answer? Yeah, it's because of that MIDI, uh, um, music, those player. MIDI samples Make they're using. Move, so, disappointing, really. Makes it all sound so cheap. You've selected Down Under. These are tunes performed by Australian artists or groups. Yeah, the bass line is just, they skipped it all together, unfortunately. Okay, go for it. Name that tune.
I don't know, it started with I'm dreaming of a white Christmas and then it went places that I don't know. <laughs> For real. <laughs> and I don't know anything about Australian music in, in general. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, I do appreciate... That tune was I Don't Know How to Love Him. Oh, I don't know how to name him. I, oh, I do right. enjoy that they use some music from across the world. It's not only uh, the US. Chin up, red player. Green player, show us how it's done. For 175 I think everyone gets two tries uh, per round. Go ahead and name that tune. Very cheery, happy, happy song, but no, I don't know the name. I have no idea. Do you know Riso? No food, Riso ain't not. Doesn't care. That's Domino sings, it's you I love. Coconuts, this sound. For real, yeah, it does sound it does sound like a fun do? song. Uh, I don't know the original either. I must admit. Oh, green player, too bad. Yellow player, let's see what you can do. No one For gets points. One hundred and twenty-five <laughs> points. Go ahead and name that tune. I have no clue. Again. I, it doesn't even sound familiar to me. I know I'm not the best with names, but at least sometimes, you know, these things I'm going like, ah, yeah, I know that tune. But this, nope. Just, just blank. Always sound advice. That was Shop Around. So, how'd you do? Uh, very poorly, as per usual. Um, I think you just need to warm up a bit, yellow player. Maybe, maybe. Maybe we need to warm up a bit. <gasps> Look at that. Let's it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. <laughs> Still everyone's game. It's one of those games where one person gets one right and everyone's just distressed. <laughs> That. The next categories are Studio 54, Big Apple, Say It Again, Meet the Beatles. Red player, you're up first. Surely from the Beatles we will recognize something. You've selected Studio 54. Welcome to the These club, Dave. No one, no one wins here today. I'm afraid. When New York's Studio 54 was one of the hottest clubs around. Wow, 400. Didn't even know they go up that high. Go ahead and name that tune. That's true. Oh, I know this one. I don't know the name, but I, at least this one I, I recognize the tune of. <laughs> I, don't, I still don't know the name, so, you know, it still gets you nothing. Yogi Bear theme. Is the Yogi Bear theme? That was How Deep Is Your Love by the Bee Gees. Yeah, I'm, I'm just terrible with names. I do recognize the song, 
But I would not know that it's from from the Bee Gees. Got it. Time to get some points. Is he just player. curse? <laughs> You've chosen Big Apple. These are tunes by groups or artists from New York. Makes sense. For 350 points, go ahead and name that tune. Let's do it. I have no idea. What the heck? It sounded terrible. A popular movie theme, The Way We Were. Okay. Yes? No. That sounded. That sounded terrible. Ah, shoot. Back to you, yellow player. Your category is Say It Again. These are tunes with a word repeating or appearing twice in the title. Okay. Not a bonus. For 450 points. Even more. Go ahead and name that tune. Will you actually cash in on it? It's budget Sonic music. <laughs> Wait, the time is up, and we still have eighty-five points. <laughs> How's that? How does that work? I did not recognize it at all. What many would like to say, I'm just a singer in a rock and roll band. No, don't, don't, don't know it. What's up? <laughs> not quite. Red player, it's your turn. They should make a uh, name that tune for just video game music. We rock that. All right, the Beatles. Surely we'll find something that we know in here. You've selected Meet the Beatles. These are tunes that were popular in 1964, the year the Beatles arrived in America. Oh, good. It doesn't have anything to do with the actual Beatles songs. <laughs> For 325 oh, man, this game. Go ahead and name that tune. <laughs> I don't know. It's vaguely familiar. It's it's vaguely familiar, but uh, I have no clue. Something you don't want to sit on: needles and pins. Oh, I definitely no, I never heard of it. So. So oh, wrong. So sorry. Green player, you're next. Yeah, so the Beatles is uh, not gonna help. Yeah, what the heck with this? I, I told you this category is not. They don't make any sense. They often do this. <laughs> For four hundred and twenty-five points, name that tune. Sounds familiar, but uh, I have no clue. It's also a problem that you typically don't get out of the intro of a song. Like you don't get to the what's often more, like more recognizable, the refrain from a, uh, a song. Do you love me? Is that it? The Dave Clark Five asks the musical question. Do you love me? Do you love me? You guys got it. Cool, cool. Finally, we have one. Perfect. You're next, yellow player. Green is gonna win. <laughs> For 350 points, 
Okay, go for it. Name that tune. Oh, crap. This one. What is this one? I, I do recognize this one as well. Uh, hopefully one of you guys does. Make your booty. The actual song. That's KC and the Sunshine Band's Shake, 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 Shake Your Booty. Yes, you got it. Well, Mr. Mario, maybe, uh... Maybe we don't need to have your oh, Beatles great. knowledge. Your general music knowledge is doing just fine as well. Look at that. Let's check those scores. Look at that. Yellow just came in at the final moment. Oh, man. Red player... Bye bye now. Oh, red player gets eliminated. I don't want to make your friend feel left out, but hey, only two. I remember this. Friend. If you if you scored if you are tied, you'll just randomly say, "Yo, dude, get out of here." <laughs> There's no like face off or anything. It's just like, well, I choose that you Less leave. Is more don't like your face. For here in this round. The fewer notes you need, the higher your points will. Uh, yeah, we know this. Uh, let's. Let's go for the full seven with ourselves player, you're up first. the most chances. Here are your seven notes. I hunger. <laughs> so you even went through the first one, I think. Um I have no clue. Like, this is super hard because you don't even hear part of the song. You only literally hear a couple of notes. A normal temperature and the title of the tune, 98.6. Don't know it. Don't know it. You're up, yellow player. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is like guessing pretty much. Here are your seven notes. <laughs> like what? You don't even hear like the the time signature. The pieces is in this way either uh, uh, instead of the uh, sorry Scott instead of the S it's the Z I will make this that it will do the uh, uh, the type of things as well uh, You just heard, I will follow him. Like, this sounds completely different. I'm sorry, but uh, how are you supposed to deduce from those seven notes that you were looking for this? I don't get it. You're up, green player. Here are your seven notes. Hmm. Like this is just impossible. You just heard right time of the night. <laughs> You're up. <young. laughs> oh dear. <laughs> These are snacky time. <laughs> We're bound to find some games where this is gonna cost me my uh, a life or something. Let's see what we got here. What do we got here, Frieza? We've got uh, some hun, some hun, some hun, and rosemarine. <laughs> so you will love hun. 
Hun is German for chicken. <laughs> Mr. Wario, thank you so much for joining us. Um, hey there, Ben. Good boy. Welcome back, welcome back, Ben. And uh, let's... There we go. Yeah, it's time for some feeding. <laughs> it won't get stolen, Frizo. You can just take your time. Frizo never takes his time when it comes to food. All the food needs to be here now. <laughs> Uh oh, sorry, I actually misread. Uh, ben is actually the one leaving. Yeah, the the lion roar is pretty. Uh, first time, kind of scared the crap out of me. <laughs> We're not looking. You're okay. Uh, and you know, it was actually Ben's idea to use Sinistar for uh, for the sound here for Kriso's uh, hunger bar, and I never knew this, but the roar that was recorded for Sinistar is an actual uh, lion war, so it makes perfect sense. <laughs> you still got some. Sinistar is a uh, arcade game from, I think it's a Williams arcade game. Uh, and it was uh, quite interesting, and yeah, the, having that thing on screen, uh, telling you to run, coward, run, it, uh, yeah, it was pretty intense. Uh, I don't think the game actually did very well, but uh, I mean, I've never seen it in, in real life, but it is uh, its very intense to play, uh, and it is super fast-paced, it's hard to play. Uh, so yeah, highly recommend it. Um, come on, here go. It, it's gone. It's gone. It's up. Finito. Uh, maybe we can do a uh, uh, little high score challenge on the Discord at some point. Although you know, I <laughs> the uh, the high score challenges I've. But uh, put up so far, I haven't seen too much attention, so maybe uh, some other ones. Here now, currently, seven notes. oh yes, yeah, seven notes. That's just that's just me practicing very poorly. What the heck? Uh, but yeah, currently there's food fight up on the Discord, so if you want to compete in a little score challenge, then uh, by all means. Uh, and the the Atari Jaguar I have little experience with. I don't own it, so I don't know much about it either. Uh, something that I would like to get into at some point. Uh... Oh, really? That's Tom Jones's hit. It's not unusual. Yeah. Wow. Wow, Dave! Amazing that you uh, recognize that. Cool. But I did not get it, unfortunately. Yeah, because uh, that's often the... Round three is over, and only one this is often the problem with those round. early... Well, thanks for playing, green player. Uh, like voice samples. Player. Way to go. Um, because they got misused. One of the more egregious examples... Uh, I can think of like in uh, I don't know if you uh, shining uh, shining force neo, which in itself isn't that great of a game, but it's super addictive of a basic hack and slash game. But there's one you've got one line in there that drove me absolutely up the wall. It's um, one of the characters that's with you quite a lot in the beginning is Merle, and uh, she keeps on shouting. Uh, hot stuff coming your way. Hot stuff coming your way. Every time she casts a fireball, it's, it gets super annoying. And many of those earlier um, games that had voice samples fall in that trap. That is a PS2 uh, game, actually. Uh, so that's not even a very early one. The Seo, great to have you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Have a wonderful night. Sleep well. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon again. Take care, man. 
Uh, anyway, let's do this nonsense again. Uh, none of the pictures that we had before, I think, and none that I actually recognize, of course. So let's see what kind of music we have. Just match the music with the picture, but uh, yeah, I don't know who's who. I don't know. So sorry, but that was. I've got the music in me by Kiki D. Oh, uh, yeah, it, it, it was a solo artist, was kind of. Why I chose a group, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, I can't see who's who here. Um, but, you know, it's not much of an excuse because I can't even hear what the frick I'm hearing. These things, man, they are so difficult. Uh, of the game shows, I think this is pretty much the weakest link. Oh, we don't get to fit our name in again. We had some score, right? Okay. Fine. Be like that. Uh, no, I think we're done for tonight with this game. I'm Bob Goen, and for myself and everyone here at Tune Headquarters, I want to say thanks for playing. We'll see you next time, right Toon here on Name That Tune. What's that about? Yeah, interesting game, but uh, the Joker's Wild and uh, Jeopardy are definitely the better uh, games here. Uh, this one is also kind of hard to find, actually. Um, and it would be interesting if they had used actual samples of the music, I think. But these these samples, man, they, they just ruined the whole game. And also, you know, it's not the most famous music. Bob Goins wardrobe furnished by himself. This has been a production of Philips Interactive Media's Fantasy Factory. Transportation and accommodations have been graciously provided by the contestants. That was a bit random for this game. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, no one actually came back to uh, to me about that. Uh, if they've seen the Joker's Wild. If I remember correctly, this game gets ridiculous with the uh, with the credits because of all the songs. Let's uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. <laughs> ironically may receive the name that tune home game ironically the credit sequence is probably the best music in the game oh here we go yeah I figured as much look at all these credits Yeah, what was that? Um, what was that group that did that uh, that court song where they went through all of the popular songs? It's an English uh, band. It, it, it's quite funny. It's quite funny because you recognize everything and it's just four chords they are playing. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's pop music for you. Unfortunately, it's not as exploring uh, or exploratory as uh, classical music was. When it comes to, uh, you know, just using and sometimes kind of misusing the notes <laughs> to make something new. Yeah, that was, uh, that was some credit scene. <laughs> they got all the answers are in the credits. Fantasy Factory. Not sure if they've made anything else, actually. Yeah, neat little game, but uh, otherwise, compared to the other ones, they are much better. There are some other, well, kind of game show kind of games on CDI, which are kind of interesting, I guess, or quiz shows. Uh, but these were directly based off of TV shows. Um, I would say they do fairly well and it's kind of interesting to see how they use different ways of answering the questions um, I think the Joker's Wild from what we've played I think that's my favorite for now 
Uh, although those questions were super difficult. I would love to do this sometime with uh, more people. Uh, that would be fun, I think. Um, where we have actually a couple of people playing and competing against each other. That would make things a lot more interesting. Uh, although, you know, for maybe not so much for... Uh, name that tune, because... <laughs> The one person who gets one right would basically win. <laughs> oh man, this this game is super tough. Um, but yeah, so much for uh, these games here, and we are at around eleven. So I am going to slowly close off here. We are already uh, way past eleven, actually. Um, so I am going to give Frizo a nice little snacky. I mean, everything is nice for Clizo, but let's uh, let's give him a nice smoothie, which is uh, one of his favorite things to eat. Well, I don't think he has a non-favorite thing to eat actually. You just basically eat anything, uh, and um, I would like to all already thank you guys so much for being here tonight again. It was a lot of fun. And I hope to see you guys uh, next time. Uh, we've got on, on Wednesday. I will finish up on Chips Challenge. I hope because I actually wanted to record some of the levels we skipped last time. And I noticed that I ran into a error. Which looked like a, um, a compiling error. And I tried to uninstall the game and then uninstall it again and it kept happening so I hope I can fix that before um, Wednesday uh, but yeah we should be uh, finishing up on chips challenge and pick up another game for the Wednesdays then and for Friday it appears that we will be playing Soul Reaver uh, the legacy of Kane which I'm looking forward to uh, I did not think about uh, that I don't actually have access to my physical copy because that's still in storage my PS1 collection but uh, you know that shouldn't be a problem we can play it through uh, the mighty mister over here uh, just fine I think um, and yeah I am going to play that on the PS1 version because that's the version I know uh, I don't have the Dreamcast version anyway so uh, yeah we'll do that and that, that will be super interesting one of the more interesting games out there, I think. Uh, one of the best introduction videos a game ever had, I think. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's for Friday. First we have the challenge on Wednesday. Finally get done with that game. <laughs> and next Sunday, I don't know what to do yet. Uh, maybe we'll check out some homebrew games. Because I think I've got a bunch of um, uh, new ones on there. Uh, and yeah, it is on Dreamcast. So we did get a Dreamcast port, which actually has uh, better graphics. Um, but it also has some downsides, like it removes a lot of the fog. And so your viewing distance is improved. But I also find that the fog in the PS1 version kind of adds atmosphere. So I don't know. Um, and also the Dreamcast controller lacks... Uh, well, it only has two shoulder buttons. So the camera movement is a bit eh, as far as I understand. I've never played it. Um, so yeah, every version has its pros and cons, but the Dreamcast version, technically speaking, looks a bit better. Uh, especially the Raziel uh, uh, model looks a lot better. But uh, oh well, the PS1 version, for what it's worth, looks really nice as well. There's some really cool... Uh, really, really has some some cool tricks up its sleeves when it comes to ps1 games uh like the way it handles music and loading of areas it's uh, it's quite impressive uh, in its own right uh, but yeah it's for friday looking forward to that uh, because i haven't played that in a long time uh, but it is an amazing game for sure and uh, it has uh, well it's a legacy of game game i mean it has uh, a very amazing story uh, I do recommend for those who have never played any of the Legacy of Kane games that they do check out a LP. I've won. It's a bit of a tip. It's one of the LPs I'm most proud of, actually. 
Um, but anyway, uh, no matter which one you check out, before we start Soul Reaver, uh, it definitely helps to have uh, seen the first game Blood Omen, the Legacy of Pain, and to see what happened in there. Uh, which is also an amazing game. Highly recommended to play through that in general. Um, hopefully some remake of that finally comes through. Uh, because the old PS1 version is uh, kind of annoying to play through due to loading times. But it is a amazing ride. Uh, like This whole series for the most part uh, does storytelling so well. Really impressive. Anyway, um, that's for Friday. First chip challenge, as I said. Finishing that uh, mess up, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, yeah, today we had some uh, some fun on these uh, game shows, and I do hope you enjoyed it as well. I did. Had some fun. Learned some new CDI games here, and we had uh, fun. Had some beer. Mm. And uh, it's almost done again. So. I'd like to thank you once more for uh, joining me here and uh, making it so enjoyable because, uh, you know, you guys in the chat, you, uh, you make this so much more fun for me as well. So thank you so, so much. And uh, yeah, I all wish your uh, nights to be pleasant. Have good dreams. And I do hope to see you guys soon in my videos, in your videos, wherever. Friso is now really being lazy, just laying around and eating. Should uh, rename him to good old Caesar here. <laughs> uh, and yeah, until that next time, take care guys. Thank you once again for watching. And see you later. Bye bye for now, or as I like to say, the muscle.